Okay. Rolling. Previously in the God Breaking. Running short on options. And with the loss of their... Um, their faithful friends, Feldorn and Renly. Um, Feldorn having been grievously wounded and um, his his form, um, his now lycanthropic form, having gone too long without pairing with a primal creature, a bestial creature, um, his body had begun to, begun to um, uh, basically um, concave upon itself and um, he, he fell down in a fit of pain following the battle with Gromash. Renly um, valiantly volunteered to take him to the only person she knew that could heal him, which is a druid, a druid master in the in the Feywild. But she knew that um, a com that such a commitment would um, likely mean the the breaking of the party, since time in the Feywild moves at a much slower pace and that spending just a few days there would amount to years here in this world. Um, but for the sake of her friend, and of your guys' partner, she and Feldorn went off to the Feywild and began their own adventure. Um, for lack of better options, the rest of you continued on your quest to find the Dragon Summit, led by Euphemia's... Um, um, Tree polymor uh, true polymorphed into a dragon light you guys uh, journeyed forward and for a couple of days traveled until you arrived at Mount Dracarys itself and there at the top of the mountain you found a kind of a desolate huge open plateau um, covered in ancient stonework um, remnants of buildings and passageways and, and streetways that all kind of focused in on the center um, circular clearing area. And in the middle of that clearing area was a, um, a large 10-foot tall pedestal, basically, but pedestal for a dragon. Um, so um, its base was very large, probably 100, 100 feet in diameter. Circular pedestal. And atop the pedestal, you encountered a curious human human looking female who um who seemed um, aloof um, distracted um, kind of physically worn down she, she looks she looks like she hadn't eaten for a while her face and her was smudged she was wearing simple simple a simple shift and it was dirty and ragged um, this was her he found her up there, and she seemed almost feral, as as in, she reacted to you almost kind of like an animal would, with with suspicion and um, with weird posture, and um, um, it obviously obviously not in her right mind. As as you guys tried to approach her and and talk to her, a, a familiar figure, one that you had not seen in oh about two years, um, dropped out of the sky and confronted you none other than Antares Saber, who, by the way, happens to be my favorite NPC in this game. Um, I have a strong vote for Tycho. <laughs> you like Tycho? I love Tycho. I'm with, I'm with Renly. <laughs> so Antares Saber drops out of the sky, points his gun at Deimos' head, and, and basically um, greets you. I mean, obviously, there there's still be, um, bad blood between you guys, but here atop the Dragon Summit, um, where for thousands of years peace was mandated, um, you guys are, are have decided to honor that pact and not come to any kind of, of violence. And Terry's had rescued Shaylin from Norten, the frozen wasteland to the north, where f they are frozen beneath the. Um, the the deep permafrost there she had found solace and even even protection and um, and safety but she was also in a state of stasis this whole time a powerful demon um, who you guys I'm just I hadn't said this last time but um, you guys if you put two and two together was under the command of Clovis because when you guys um, scried northward 
you saw a single individual walking through the, the frozen wasteland up there um, on, on, on Clovis's shard of demon glass. Um, a demon had gone up there to find her and destroy her. And Terry's had tracked that demon down and and found him as he was as he was basically um, cracking through the ice and was was in the process of killing her. He destroyed the demon and rescued Shaylin, discovering that she was in fact a dragon, um, and him knowing something about dragons just a little bit, um, brought her here in order to summon the rest of the dragons um, because he figures that that is his best way to achieve the power and the means by, by which to destroy the demons. Alright? Um, so, like I said, bad blood between you, but he is here. The, the um, Deimos, you managed to greater restoration on Shaylin and bring back some of her mind. Just enough for her to and to reveal her true form atop this massive plateau, she she grew and and as she grew, a blizzard tore through the area. Howling winds and bursts of snowfall and ice and sleet tore through the area as you were all pushed back, um, and her form be uh, magnificently began to shape and change, and um, and and, and enlarge itself, and you saw. Um, an avatar of herself. It was a, a projection of herself. I'm going to retcon this. It wasn't actually what she looked like because I found the picture that I had actually wanted to use <laughs> instead of the one that I googled on the spot that um, last week. So this is what I showed you last week. Um, as you saw Shaylin um, made of ice and frost itself in dragon form. Uh, no flesh and blood here. Um, massive, towering, 200 feet tall and her tail and and wingspan much larger. She issued a shuddering call that that resonated through the whole mountain and shaking the ground beneath um, and, and as best as you can tell would, would echo throughout um, throughout uh, all of creation. Any, any, any dragon um, in creation would be able to hear this call through magical means. She issued the call and then she reverted back to her humanoid form and I believe that is where we left it so currently the five of you are atop this massive pedestal um, or are, are, are at the top of this, the dragon summit looking up at this pedestal again because you have been pushed back off of it so this is my crude drawing the blue circle is a pedestal um, you are all pushed back somewhere scattered where these little dots and dashes and stuff are around um, and the the ice and the snow has begun to recede um, let's see oh yeah the last thing you guys heard was Shaylin and Antares talking at the top of the atop the pedestal and her agreeing that she does indeed owe him a blood debt and that she um, intends to repay it all right so that's where we left off what do you guys want to do i was going to ask her if while we're waiting for whatever this is if i could uh still help give her a few restorations because i'm sure she herself can probably tell that uh, her, her mind's still a little bit cloudy um, she glances at you, her eyes steely, sharp, but co and cold, and she looks at you with, with a with a, a very straightforward glare. And she she says, um, in, in kind of a a half lilting, um, broken kind of speech, you can tell that there's there's something still fogging her mind. There's something there's something, and maybe maybe it's not a fog. Maybe it's actually how she is. But she, something seems just obviously not right to you. She says, There is nothing you can do for me. And very cold and chill-like, she, she, she breaks eye contact. And she, she turns and she says, Now we wait. And she goes over to a large 
rock and she sits down on it. What do you guys want to do? Okay. Oh, well, I guess we're waiting, guys. I want to spend time with Light learning dragon customs because I want to be respectful. These guys are much bigger than me. Okay. Okay, and I, I, you guys know you guys do know that um, West Vane is being destroyed right now as you speak, right? There's still a, oh, the yeah. army is still there, her. and the marked ones are still over there, and all sorts of craziness is happening all around the rest of the world. All right, so I'm sure she'll give us a, a later problem. Like uh, I have no idea, but uh, can we ask her how long we're waiting for? I mean, I'm sure she'll give us some answer that doesn't help, but you never know. She, um, you, so you ask her how long we're waiting for. And she says, The call went forth. All who hear and who decide to respond to it will come. However long it takes has to do with how far away they are. She, she says it very condescendingly. You know, like the kindergartner would, would know the answer to this. Well... I guess, taking, judging from her age, um, that's a compliment because Deimos is only a few hundred years old, technically, or whatever it is, and she's probably fucking really, really, really old. Mm -hmm. So, kindergartner is probably, uh, that's probably not pretty nice. That's a compliment. Hey, you guys, do you think if we tell her um, while we wait, if she wants to go check out what we're up against, and maybe she can do like a flyby and kill some of the army so they don't fuck all of uh, Aslan up, and then. You know, just while we wait. Yeah, we should at least tell them about what's going on. Um, especially, I'm sure that she knows shit's hitting the fan. So wait, what are you asking her to do? Right, um, so... I'll start what you saying. Um, yeah, I'll tell her. Um, great and powerful Shaylin. And I'll do. I'll say this in Draconic. Um... I know you're wise, but do you have a clue of what we are facing, what we are up against? She kind of sneers her face a little bit and says, I care not for you and your concerns. What happens to, to m mankind is of very little interest to me. Okay, then... I... Don't understand what you're doing here, then, if you don't care. I was brought here by him, she points to Antares. I owe him a debt. He wishes I make the call, so I made the call. She says, this world is still hostile to me and to my kind. Says, I can smell uh, the dearth of draconic influence. I can smell our death still lingering in the air from when we were struck down by the gods. Which god struck you down? Um. She, she says, um. She says this. Malkior. Is how oh, we know him. Malkior. Uh, can I do a religion check on that by any chance? Sure. You know enough that um, to know that throughout the, the millennia, gods have had different names and, and images and multiple, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of different. Um, versions of themselves that they present to people. Every god is known by a different name and a different language and a different culture, that kind of stuff. So so you're able to to get a sense that this god may be one that you know of today, um, and probably is, but as far as specific version or the specific deity's name that of in your language and in your knowledge, you're not sure who it is. Okay. Um Tempest not Tempest. Uh, do I think it's Tempest? Um. Roll another religion check. Probably no, not. Alright. 
Deimos is still going to be like, his eyes would be a little squinty. He's trying to put two and two maybe together. And then I'll nod my head and back away slowly. Okay. Um, so while you guys are talking to her, Albrick, you're talking to Light. And he says, um, he says to you, How might I aid thee, friend dwarf? I just want to make sure that when the uh, rest of uh, the dragons get here, I don't do something stupid and get eaten. <laughs> so, so I can be respectful. He says, absolute obeisance and servitude is the only answer. For an elder elder dragon, one of the ones of power, um, he says, there are no they have no peer within dra the draconic hierarchy. They are as kings, as rulers, as even gods to us. Do you know, friend dwarf, of the draconic lineage and of whom I speak? Question, so. What? That was my next question is, you know, can I look... Tell me more about the Elder Ones. I want to know history. The Draconic elder, Elders, he says. Always, always, each flight of dragons had a king. Um, and those kings met here atop the Dragon Summit to converse, to barter, to... Um, to, what do you call it? to make peace with each other or to make war elsewhere they might they might have come to blows but here there was always peace um, the seven dragon lords elders amongst our kind the monarchs of draconic uh, culture um, one from each flight um, indeed there are eight but the eight has become just a spot of, shall I say, honor and respect, since he had been, has has been absent for many thousands of years. The seven that sh that um were in existence, the seven dragon lords, at the last at the at the end of their age, were, and Elwyn, Elwyn, you had some inclination of this through your reading. Um, he says, the seven were Shailin, she of the white, and Elwyn, you um you had a story in your book about a white dragon, right? Do you remember that? I, I mean, it's been over a year since you you read that. Of course, I have it right here. Um. Girl finds young dragon befriends hometown attack many slain by raiders. Dragon friends uses ice breath to kill raiders. Girl goes and lives with dragon happily ever after. Shaylin, female ice dragon, white lands to the north. <laughs> Wonderful ah, perfect. note, Elwyn. Perfect. Perfect. Um. Um. Then, then he says, um, "So Shaylin of the white." There is Krigajard. That's a new one. Um, what color was he? Um, I'll call him of the bronze. King of the bronze. Mighty. Strong. Unmovable. There were the twin pair, the mated couples of flame and fire, red and brass. Or red and gold, I think I said. Is it not red and brass? Um, that was... Red and... Yeah, red and brass. Yeah, Zerobor and Marix. Zerobor, yep, exactly. Zerobor and Marix. Okay. There was, um, the, the lofty king of the wind. Practinic. He was a, a. Let's see, what was he? What would he have been? Probably a silver dragon. 
Um, there was the blue. Queen. Let's see here. I have Nebularos as the silver dragon. Okay. So I'll call Praxenia something else then. <laughs> Queen Tyophensia of the blue. And then he who sat above them all, the king of the sil the silver dragon king Nebularos. I think that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. He says, of course, they and their flights were decimated and destroyed in the rending. Although the existence of Shaylin here, alive before me, had I not seen her with my own eyes, I would not have believed that she had, had survived. But here she is, and perhaps there are others alive as well. Any other questions or anything else you want to say? Mm. So, white, bronze, some red, you're deciding on the other guy, blue and silver? Yeah, more or less. You're not going to see all the colors of the, the chromatic and the sure. uh, metallic represented in this in this world. The 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 lines between good and bad and chromatic and, and metallic don't really exist. These are just different flights, different um, races <clears throat> within the dragon culture. Um, so, it, I, I'm used to some different versions, so I just want to confirm this isn't a question for him, but in this one you have Bahamu and Tiamat are actually gods and, go yes. and the goddess. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And Tiamat, um, yeah. you guys, um, you guys saw this, Elwin. You saw them a little bit in your vision, right? Yeah, and I, yeah, and I remember from like the session one how. Wait, is Tiamat actually like a good person in this game? That'd be sweet. Probably a neutral. Owen dropped out though. Um, sorry, yeah, I was muted. Um, yeah, I remember from my vision and also from like the um, the first session when Asmodeus um, summoned Tiama and then I think killed her, something like that. Uh, didn't kill her. Um, used her to help him invade the heavens. Okay. But yeah, from my vision, yeah, I remember. Okay. So that's about what you guys know. In your vision, you saw Tiamat and Bahamut leading the whole entirety of the dragon race um, in war against the gods. And you saw a little bit of the aftermath. It's happening right now, though, right? No, that was thousands of years ago. That was that was the rending 6,000 years ago. Okay, just I was just making sure, because I, I, I knew... Bahamut's still a good guy, though, right? Uh, as far as you yeah. Know, yeah, I mean he's my deity. He was he was dragged away in chains by one of the gods. Okay, that's the last that Elwin saw of him. And okay. Tiamat was slain. Um, a, a sword shoved through her chest, um, and she was basically sent to. She was killed. She was sent to hell. Um. No more questions. Anything else? Um, anyone else want to do anything or say anything? Nope, I'm good. There's an uneasy tension between you guys and, and Terry's. Um, he's not exactly staying far away, but he, he's he's definitely a little bit separate from you. And Shaylin is kind of off in his area as well. All right. Hear me, right? Um, yes, again. Yeah. Anything you, you want to do, Ashok? No, I won't. I'll just let him come to me if he needs me. Okay. Cool. Do you want to ask anyone anything, or talk to any of these characters? I'm not quite sure what I would say. All right, Euphemia. Anything you want to do? 
No, no. Okay. So, um, you guys are waiting up there, and literally nothing is happening for the for for hours. Um. I'm reading my book. Okay. Okay. You're well into it. You're in the back, the last quarter of it. Um. And uh, so hours go by, and you're just all kind of just waiting there. There's an awkward tension between you all, um, at, where there's one party, and Terry's and, and Shaylin are off on their own, just sitting and waiting, and you guys are all kind of just twiddling, or, twiddling around, just waiting. Um, and... After about four hours, you see something flutter around um, through the air. So, um, you see it. You see a, a, um, a small thing in the air, just kind of fluttering around, about the size of a probably a bat. It just fl flits through. And it catches one of your eyes, and you kind of glance at it, and it's just flying around really quickly, about the size of a bat, kind of circling you, but then just darting in, in between your, um, your where, where you guys are as a party. And eventually, it comes to rest, um, you know, about 50 feet away from Shaylin. It just lands on the ground in front of her, and just looks. Very animalistic, very very much like a like an unintelligent creature, and just looks around. Did you say it's a like butterfly? That. Oh, it looks like that. It's about it's the size of a shoe. Okay. Um, and as time goes by, later in the day, you see more of them start to appear. You know, we're talking a couple dozen of them just start to, to, to settle around the area. Um. Uh. Right. I'll get a, a little uneasy, but I'm not going to go, you know, hacking things. Okay. That's uneasy, if that makes sense. Um, you guys start seeing more creatures begin to arrive. Um, not dragons, but vaguely resembling dragons. Um, you can tell that probably throughout the, the centuries some species that had been related to dragons or had dragon blood um, animal and, and animal like have persisted have survived and basically this this summit has become like a beacon for all those beginning to attract all draconic type creatures these creatures that look like this these guys are a bit larger um, uh, you know about four or five foot four about four foot tall four foot wingspan that kind of thing they start to arrive um, and so those do the, the, the them? sure what are you looking for uh do i know anything anything about them like anything special to note like and you haven't actually seen them before. Um, they they seem to be pretty secluded. Their their blacky scales have like have purplish undertones. Um, their features are kind of elongated and and almost almost alien looking. Um, their eyes are kind of red and expressionless and just seems seems to like stare forward. Their um his their their wings are covered in black, um, almost like like ash. It's like they um. They tend to live near near areas where there's a lot of fire and smog and ash. Um, you well, what you I mean call it's weaknesses. Um, it's very much like an ant, a very animalistic um, weaknesses in the sense that they don't look anything particular. You think you you figure fighting one would be like fighting any other other beast or creature um, in, that you've encountered. It's 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 made out of flesh and blood. You know. You're not sure if it breathes fire, but the way it's puffing around, it seems to at least have some kind of breath and power to it. But no, nothing in the way of weaknesses. Okay. 
Um, so the, those those guys begin to accumulate as the sun is going down. Those those larger creatures, and then right as um, deep into uh, as as the sun has already set, and the the stars begin to begin to um, fill the night sky. Um, you hear the cl the clicking of claws, large kind of like scraping claws, begin to as creatures seem to be climbing the mountainside and scaling up around it, scraping claws. Um, and in the, in the dark of the moonlight, you guys with night vision, or dark vision, are able to see some of these creatures beginning to, to attract to the, the peak of the summit, um, scaling over the edges and climbing over rock fixtures. They're larger. They're about 10 feet long, is what you're seeing. And that's what they look like. Okay. I, I stick to as close as Shaylin as possible without seeming like a creeper. All right. They seem pretty, like I said, like they're animals, but but they give Shaylin a wide berth. They begin to congregate around her, but within the circle of 50 feet, almost by instinct. They all just kind of gather around, um, but there's a clearing of 50 feet where none of them are, are, and she's at the center, none of them are around, are, are, are breaching that, that clearing, but then they begin to congregate around outside of that. Any thoughts, any questions? I mean, they look draconic, so I have no questions. Tamos wants to see where this is going. It's like a freak show, but an awesome one. All right. Well, let me add someone that can sense demon. Can you sense demons? No. And Terry's can sense demons, but that's why I'm assuming if something really bad demon happened, he'd just start blowing heads off. You do notice that all these creatures, may, while they may be ra um, ravenous and um, and um, predatory out in the in the wild are very much sedate here. Okay. What is Antares reaction to all of this? Um, he's just I he's just all that perception. Okay. <laughs> but useless perception. He spends check on he spends that. time he spends time um, standing around um, looking around. He never sits down. He's all weary eyes, just kind of darting back and forth. But um, into the evening, he actually he actually steps up into the air, um, and you see him standing or, or, or pacing above you guys. You know, some, you know, about 150 feet in the air above you guys. Um, do I notice okay. anything else with that perception check? Um, no, no. That's all that's going on right now. I'm not gonna complain. Okay. I'm not gonna complain. All right. Uh, time goes by. The next day, more of these creatures start to arrive. Various kinds, draconic in, in, in origin or relate and and distant relation. They just seem drawn to this area, kind of like Noah's Ark, and they just seem drawn to, to this thing. Animals just start showing up out of everywhere. Lizards, um, flying reptiles, that that kind of stuff. All all surrounding this mountain. Um. And a couple of days more go by, so I'm gonna. So I'm talking three days. So is there anything you guys want to do within three days' time? Uh, Ethina, you will have finished just... your book. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the second I day you'll add finish your book. Yes. Do I add an hour? Okay. No, you can add it. Uh... Just, I guess, use sending stones to keep in contact with like what's his face. Um, See how mustering the army is going. Uh, Darius, Prince Darius. I gave him one. He is. Um, he says that preparations are almost complete. Yeah. No. Otherwise, just enjoying time, making okay. small talk. Anyone else you want to reach out not to, to guys? or anything else you want to do? Shaylin is, is not. 
not very conversational. Well, try to befriend not, not with tiny the... dragons. Okay. Damos is having attachment issues, not having the captain there. All right, all right. So you're gonna try to befriend one of them? How are you doing yes. it? Yes. I will find the biggest one of those tiny things, and then um, I have food, and I have ridiculously good petting hands. Okay. All right. So go ahead and roll me your um, animal handling. Okay. So um, over the course of the next day, okay. you start trying to to make a friend with one of these these creatures. Let's see where is its picture. Wasn't that one? Which one did I show you? I got a bunch of these pictures here, so I'm trying to find which one I showed you. Um, so, and over the and you you slowly begin to win its trust, Demos. So after a period of time, you have made friends with a small It's not right. I showed you guys a picture of Sorry. I don't remember what I showed you guys. I can't find it. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to make a friend. Yeah, Last I literally time. can't find it. I don't know where it went. Yeah. I'm going to call All him right. Bam. I still have it up, uh, but it's unidentified, so I can't help you. Okay. Well, I'll find it. But All right, go on. So you made a friend of it. Um, it, it comes around for food every a couple times every day, but that's about it. Into the third day, you guys hear. You guys start. You know, you're, you've, you've taken to looking around and watching as this this collage of creatures starts to arrive um, at your at your basically at your doorstep. Um, but what you do notice in your third day is that it looks like at the base of the mountain something else is happening. All right you start seeing humanoid creatures beginning to arrive. It's too far down to be able to tell who they are, what they are, but you're seeing um, signs of small camps. You're seeing signs of some, you know, just, just like, you know, people beginning to settle there. And um, into the day, more and more begin to arrive. And then you look and you do see some of them beginning to, to climb the mountain. There is a there is a brief precipitous pathway, the or small precipitous pathway that does spiral up the, the outer rings of the mountain and make its way up. And into the, late into the evening, the first one of them begins to arrive. Owen, did you happen to feel anything on a, on a uh, molecular level uh, when she called? <laughs> did I? Did I get like some goosebumps? You did not. That's you negative, not, my friend. You are not related enough, closely related enough. Well, I guess these people are just have more draconic. Are they not half dragons? Are they? Are they various races? Um, as they well as the ones that approach. One, what, what is he? He's one after. That makes sense. Imports. Okay. Scaling up the outside of the of the ring, you're beginning to see Dragonborn start to arrive. Um, various shades, various types and stuff, but you know, the, right now there's only a few dozen that have come up their way. Um, but you see that there's more, obviously, hundreds that have begun to gather at the base of the mountain. This guy comes up, and b the ones behind him seem to be taking orders from him. I didn't think there were this many half-dragons in the world. These are Dragonborn. Dragonborn. Same difference. You've encountered several of them in your journeys. 
the guy Three? from Ospium, but that's the only guy I knew of. I thought there'd be like a couple dozen, not a not hundreds. Well, you're starting to see all the ones that are are within three days' journey are starting to to arrive. So this guy walks up to you. He says. He looks around. He says. What is going on here? We heard the call. We felt it in our bones. We come here, we see the dragon kind all around, but no dragons to be found except... And he looks over. And his, his eyes kind of widen as he looks at light. He says, That one. You see his men begin to gather around him. His, um, and they... They all begin to point, and he he, begins, he turns to them. And he's looking, and he and they they're talking in their in their thick draconic kind of tongue to each other. As as light is just kind of hanging out in the distance, just kind of like I don't know, sitting under a tree, or or, <laughs> or pretending to be a tree. Um, he says, "Who is that one? Have you come with it? A dragon in this day and age." Speak. Explain yourselves. Uh, we have come with that one seeking the help of any and all dragons who might be alive. There's actually another dragon on this mountaintop, and I point to Shaylin, and I say, she's an elder one. At that, he kind of stops, and he realizes what's, what's, what's been said. He, he says... And all the dragon born behind him. Now, by now, there's a couple dozen behind him. They look. They look at um, Shaylin. Right, and they and they all begin to they they all begin to to bow their heads down, and they say, "Indeed, I see now. What you say is true. That small one, and he points at light, could never have made such a call." But she. Um, they, he approaches, and he's the only one to breach the fifty-foot circle around her. He steps up, you know, a little bit closer, about about thirty feet from her, and he drops to his knee. And the dragonborn behind him all bow as well and drop to their knees. And, they, and he says, yes. "My lady, Bartholomew, head overseer of the cult of the dragon, is at your beck and call." Oh, okay. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to him. Does he have any insignia like my medallion that I got from Balanax? Oh, yes. oh yeah. All these guys do. All over the fucking place. I'm gonna take out the medallion and sh and like kind of um, show it to Deimos, just like uh, just flash it at him and then point at these guys and then say Balinar. Oh shit. Were we supposed to drop kick these sons of bitches? I don't know. Let's play it by ear. Okay. Remember that any any show of violence on the top of the on the top of the um, mountain will get you eaten. I'm not gonna show violence. Damos is against violence. We're not using violence. I kind I don't of know face what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. So um, as they do that, as they bow before her, you know she she acknowledges their presence. She kind of inclines her head a little bit and and notices them, but but still, you know, now not not feral anymore, not clawing about like an animal. She's sitting there, you know, very regal, very straight backed, you know, or, um, looking around. And she she not she looks the other way. Um, she nods almost with her eyes and then she looks off again. Um, Bartholomew um, rises after a few minutes and backs out away from the circle, not turning around, not showing his back to her, but just walking back slowly and the rest of the dragons behind, dragonborn behind him do as well. Um, and he says, he says, This is the day we have all lived for. He turns to, some, to the, his men behind him. He says, Bring them all. Tell them that the dragon queen, Shailin, has reappeared. Our day has come. 
All right. There's a, a rather large dragonborn that he's talking to. This one with bl um, bluish tinted skin, off large, f uh, a large figure, uh, very very strong looking. He nods and he says, "As you command, Bartolomeo." And he turns and he whispers to a bunch of people and, and sends them off. And the and several messengers start run running down the side of the of the um the mountaintop to go fetch the rest. Or to inform them, anyway. <laughs> Bartolomir comes around to um, to you guys now, and he says, Huh, I understand. You lot have some explaining to do. What are you doing here in the most sacred place of dragon kind? Um, seek the help of the dragons to battle the, uh, out of the demon threat. I'm gonna Shailen. do my. Oh, go on, go on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread my wings, and I'm gonna do my draconic presence. And after they're all odd, um, I'll, We're I'll. Uh, excuse me. You want me to frighten you again? Um, <laughs> I'll pull out the medallion and um, like wear it on my chest. Um, as you spread your wings and you and you and you you, you express your presence, uh, you don't see any visible reaction in Bartholomew. A couple of the ones behind him turn and, and glance your way, and they they narrow their eyes. Bartholomew says to you, uh, as you put the pendant on your chest. Um, Bartholomew says, this. "Your cheap sorceress chicks, do not impress me." I am of pure draconic blood. You are just a shit stain in the gene pool. And that's pendant on your chest. You are not one of ours. Where did you get it from? Um, I'm going to say... Um... One of my best, uh, one of the most noble, and one of the best people I know was once the owner of this. I don't know if you know him. Um, Balinar. I know not the name, but indeed, if you knew him and you befriended him. He so, gave um, this to me. Right before he died. Then what was the request that he asked of you? For if one of us were to bequeath one of our marks to another, not of the dragonborn race, it has come with a request. And he steps forward, he's, he's like right in your face. He says, what did he ask of you, this dragonborn? He said, he told me to seek out his people and take revenge on what had happened to him. Vengeance? Vengeance, Vengeance. against whom? He's fishing. That is... he's, 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 he's looking at you up and down. He's, he's kind of suspicious. Uh-huh. Um, I haven't been able to gather much information, but now that you're here, maybe you can bring some light to the situation. Roll a persuasion check. Do I get advantage? Because he's supposedly a dragon? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll lucky that. What? I only have one left? Okay, my yeah, last left. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's been two days. You have them. You have more. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you guys, it's two days here. Let me let me give you guys a rest. Um, he says, You speak well. Perhaps, perhaps there is more to your story. Hmm. 
interesting. Well, if you don't mind, while we wait for the rest of the dragons to arrive, maybe you and I can talk. Um, can I roll on insight on uh, to see if he was lying about not knowing Balinar? Sure. You're pretty sure he had no idea who Balinar was. Okay. Um... If you recall, Balinar got that off of someone else. Oh, I wasn't there. That was yeah. before. He got off the Admiral, I believe. Did he? Yeah, he got it off Admiral Kizaru, the Magnus of Flame. Oh, I was there. I got his staff. Yeah, that's right. That's where you got your staff. Oh, from. that's right. So yeah, I'll um, you know I'll kind of see if he can follow me so we can speak, and. Um, I'll whip out my staff and show it to him. Okay. And I'm going to pretty much recount uh, everything that we've done. Um, you know, just so, and I'm going to be completely honest with him. So if he insight checks me or if he like probes on my mind or whatever, um, he knows I'm telling the truth. And I, um, you know, I'm going to be completely sincere that we traveled with Balinar for a long time. He was one of my best, you know, best buddies. And we've been trying to get information on the Cult of the Dragon, but everybody's really tight-lipped until um, Owain um, shed some light on the prejudice against all the all the Reds. Um, he, told the, he told me that I should look in Azoa and in Signash... And it was the white and the bronze that betrayed the rest of the dragons. So I'm going to tell him that's all I know if he can kind of shed some light on the, everything that's going on. Okay. He says, You have done your history. Just, Pray tell, what color was this Balinar you speak of? He was the red. I see. Of course. Well, the, the word of those prejudices was indeed true many years ago. There was much bloodshed amongst our kind. There was death. There was genocide. The white and the bronze. Is that what you just said? I forgot. Yeah, the white and the bronze. Yeah, white and bronze. Um, murdered the gold and the red. Ex seeking to extinguish them from this plane. But after the rending... He looks, he, he looks at... Um, you, you guys are standing off on your own apart from the rest of his people. And He says... Bartholomew? He's bronze. Yeah, bronze, okay. And um, so that means he was a betrayer? Plus. The cult of the dragon was was uh, around, was um, born out of genocidal tendencies. Which when when some of the dragon flights went to war with each other, the so dire was their war that the the dragon born um, kind of of the same lineage as them began to war with each other. So the cult of the dragon were the bronzes and the and the whites coming together and seeking to exterminate the reds and the the golds. Oh. I get it. Bottom verse. And so that was hundreds of years worth of hate and racial hatred and and bigotry, that kind of stuff. The years ago before the reckoning, though. The rending. The rending. It was it was occurring around the, before the time of the rending, yes. But the cult of the dragon persisted afterwards, and a lot of the genocide happened, um, um, you know, in relatively recent history as well. Balinar and Kizaru were among the only reds left in, in the world. Because um, most of their kind had been extinguished or, or you know, killed. Okay. Hmm. Alright. So, but Bartolomeo sure. says, But all of that has been left behind, as we have seen the need for higher purposes. Gone are the days of bloodshed and genocide. 
this. And now, with a dragon elder before us, it seems we may have a new calling. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, I'm going to leave it at like this for now and just wait for the dragons. Alright. Um, as that day goes by and the next day goes by, you start to see more and more dragonborn congregating around the edge of the, of the summit. So, they begin to really start to gather. You're talking hundreds of them. So if this is the top of the summit, you know, the, the blue circle is the center of it. All around the outside ring, you know, all around the outside, dragonborn are, are, you know, there's creatures and animals and stuff all around, but the dragonborn begins to encamp all around the, the eastern, or I mean the western side of it and the northern side of it, begin to, to camp out. You start seeing hundreds of them come up um, of various colors and, and types, but you can see that most of them have some kind of affiliation to Bartolomir and his, his people. There are some others represented, some small groups of a dozen, you know, from from like hillside clans and um, and different tribes. But a lot of them, the present, um, bear some kind of affiliation with the with the cult of the dragon. Okay, and and looking around, you guys see that more. There's more and more. You figure at the base of the mountain, there's probably a couple thousand dragonborn, um, having having already arrived now into your sixth or seventh day, waiting at the top of the of this mountain top. All right. Anything you want to do or say? Uh, no, I'll try to like make friends with him and stuff. Okay. Just he in seems, case. He, he seems to be pretty amenable. I mean, he's um, he does he's not really one for small talk, but um, he's not aggressive to you or dismissive to you. And he, in fact, he 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 asks you questions, more probing questions as well. Um, he says, "Your friend, this red." He is slain, is he? Yes, he sacrificed himself to save the rest of the group. Pity. Uh, and then no, I'll tell him about the dragons that we saw. Like the really big dragons that were made out of lava. Mm -hmm. He nods and he says, You speak of what we only know in myth. If you have lain eyes upon the King Zerobor and Queen Myrax, then you have done more, or you have known more than any of us here. Yes, we have traveled, and um, I'm gonna ask Amos to bust out the the cooler with some tequila, <laughs> just to help the All conversation right. along. All right, roll a perception check. All of us, or just Elwin? just just Elwin. Okay, you've seen him glance at your staff. Um, Several times, I mean, and and, and Glan, you, you you just picked up him eyeing it once in a while. Um, and when and when if he gets any kind of inclination that you're looking or that you're noticing him, he, he kind of like pretends to be looking at something else or or otherwise. But um, you, over the course of you know the, the the conversations that you have over the next couple of days, you 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 pick up slightly that he ha he does have some kind of um, fascination or at least interest in your staff. Okay. Um, once I pick up on it, if it took me a little while, uh, one of those days I would have taken the opportunity to fly um, a, a respectful distance enough away and I would summon the fire breath just to show him, not at him, not at anyone, just like, you know, up in the air and stuff. Okay. Now, at that point, there's a lot of awe and gasping um, amongst the dragonborn. Um, roll me another perception check. Okay, that's what you can tell. Okay. All right. Um, into the 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 set sixth the sixth day. Um, the people are all waiting, and they're they're very much reverently in awe. Light is very much in reverent awe. I don't know if the rest of you guys are getting restless, um, but the, the ex extreme patience. You know, Bartholomew says, "Patience is a virtue amongst dragonborn." 
Um, you just wake up one morning and you see Shaylin standing in the middle of the pedestal, talking. Um, talking to two other figures that are standing there with her. Can I tell who they are? Um, they are... They seem to be... This is, I don't know why it does this. Some of these images that I load up, I can hide the, 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 the file name. And some of them I can't. I don't know why. It's some weird add-on or something that, that does it. Okay. You yeah, see her standing in the, in the middle of the, um, of the platform. Standing there, and there's seen there's two individuals. They look humanish in nature, um, a, um, a man and a woman. But it's obvious that they are that they are not normal people because their their bodies are completely um, inflamed in, in fire oh. and, and looking as if they're oh. burning lava. Oh, oh gross! Oh, Emma turns away and he apologizes for walking in. Well, they're not they're not making out right there. They're they're both standing there talking to her. But yeah, they do uh, seem to be like made of fire, but completely naked. Is that the fire dragons? Yep. Yo, fire dragons, what's up? Um, are they just talking to um the what's her name? Shaylin? It's just them three. Yes. Just the three of them. And uh, Terry's is there. He's standing about about twenty feet away. Outside of the, there's three of them. They're standing very close to each other, talking. Okay, um, I'm gonna get as close as Antares is. I'm gonna follow Elwin. All right, you I'm guys start approaching, and as you walk, as you guys head up to 20 feet, as you get around to Antares level, the Dragonborn they look at you, and they, you hear them talking to each other, and they, um, you see a couple of them move, like grabbing their weapons, but then. Um, a couple of looks and they realize that they can't do anything like that and they, they, just, they just look at you very very um, distrustfully or you know they can't believe you're approaching um, the the trio in the middle of, this, of the pedestal they almost assures um, I, sorry go on what? go on oh, they almost assures them that nothing bad's gonna happen um, because there's like the five of us surrounded by thousands of them so and those are like crazy cool god dragons. <laughs> it's like having like a bunch of like fifth graders go try to fight an NFL linebacker surrounded by a bunch of other fifth graders. Mm -hmm. As you approach, so you know Bartholomew is nowhere nearby. The Dragonborn are hanging back pretty far um, outside the fifty foot range. But you guys just just walk straight towards the middle where Antares is with them, um, and, and to Antares level, and. Um, and Terry's turns to you. So you're still out of range of them. And Terry's is standing there. And he says, It looks like they've begun to arrive. Been waiting for long enough. I think we have actually been in the presence of those two that just got here before. He, look, he says, He says, Now, you... Listen to me. I summon these dragons. Look, let's not start. Let's. We got a world to worry about, and we can worry about yours and my differences afterwards. Let's work and together honestly, on this one. Heal her, your, your little summoning would have been a failure. He says. Agreed. There's nothing we can do here. But I have my own agenda. And you... As long as you don't interfere with it. Let me ask you a question. Does your agenda involve being alive? He says... What do I care if I live or die as long as the demons fall from the heavens? We're in the same oh, fucking boat. Yeah, we're good. That's what we want. But we want to live, too. <laughs> yeah, we're going off, like, the checklist. And, like, that's, like, the end goal. Like, we, we prefer yeah. to stay alive. I mean, I mean, shit happens, but 
I mean, I'm willing to sacrifice myself and stuff like yeah. that for the greater good, but mm -hmm. hopefully we can do it without having yeah. to reach that. You, you, you get the you get the sense that he's willing to sacrifice a whole lot more than your lives to, to see that happen. <laughs> That's what he said. He's willing to sacrifice probably the lives of everyone in this world. <laughs> Yeah, look at his. Look at me. I got my hat down. You can't see my eyes. I'm all dressed in black. I talk about death all the time. Demons. What do you fucking do? Eh? Most likely, Demos is on the top of his list with, of the yeah, first people to sacrifice. Like. <laughs> he says, as long guys, as though. as long as our goals are aligned, and that the demons fall from heavens, from the heavens, then you may proceed. But oh, thank you, big powerful boss man. Thank you for letting me proceed. This joke and don't shoot me in the face again. That did not feel good. <laughs> Very well. All right. I'm going to tell him. But you know what? I really do hope that you survive all this. That way I can have the pleasure of killing you afterwards. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. whoa. Game says no. Mm -mm. I don't think so. But I do want your hat. Can I have your hat? He, he looks at you, Owen, and he says, Now that I can respect. He looks at you, Damos, he says, You, get the fuck away from me. That's what you say every fucking time. I'm just trying to be friends here. Damos is, just puts his head down and walks away. Because this guy's got, obviously, a cool fashion sense. Damos does not. Damos just sticks probably smells better than you. Oh, probably. He's definitely more hygienic. Alright, right. so um, as you as you guys are talking, um, you notice that the, the trio in the center has stopped talking to each other. And they've turned and looked your way. The man in red, the male, says, Who are you that you dare to approach our meeting? So and he fast? looks at you all and he says, I have seen you before. Yeah, were you guys in that dungeon down there? Garden a hammer thing? I, uh, before speaking or anything, I will uh, show some respect and, uh, you know, lower my head, stuff like that. And I'll say, indeed, we have been in the, your great presence in the past. You actually provided one of our companions with a great weapon that you were... Uh, that you were keeping safe. Um, that friend, I'm happy to, t to say, um, decided to take on the responsibilities of Modrin. And I know Modrin is a friend to your kind. The, 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 the female um, steps forward. She says, Ah, uh, yes. In the temple of Modrin. You remember, dear, he had asked us to keep safe his his weapon, and we allowed these to come retrieve it. Says, of course, my love, I recall. We have, you have traveled a long ways, and yet and we find you here. It seems the fates have deemed our paths to intertwine. He turns to Shayla and he says, Are these the humans... Or are these the mortals that you spoke of? She nods her head. It is they who awoke my mind. It is they who um, who enabled me to make the call. She says, but he, and she points to Antares, is the one I made the call for. I owe him the, the debt. Zerbor nods. He says, good. I see. He looks around, he says, We are not yet a quorum. Once another arrives, we will be able to speak with authority. But for now, he looks at you all, says, We continue to wait. He looks, he says, Tell me, what would you have of us? I kind of well. look at Elwyn, and I'm like, 
I kind of shrugged my shoulders in the, like, in the sense of, I didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> Me again? <laughs> All right. Just a checklist. Oh, yeah. My friend here has, uh, he, 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 he's the, the paper keeper of the, of the group. Um, yes. <clears throat> I'm going to hold out my hand. <laughs> Damos. Damos shall pull out two pieces of paper. He's been working on the past actual couple days because he knew he was going to do a presentation uh, and he's geez. a businessman. And you see uh, crudely drawn uh, West Fane and other cities of just shit going crazy. Uh, pretty much just, it looks like he drew it with crayons. And he says, we don't like these things. We want um, the bad things. He says, big picture of Gromash. Uh, it would be nice if they were gone because it would make this war against the heavens a lot better. And then I flip it over to the, the, the picture of fighting in heaven. And I'm like, we should like totally do stuff to um, help the gods. I know you don't like all the gods. Um, there's a good chance that God's dead. Um, after Deimos is done with his with his uh, f- with like stick figure drawings, um, I'll, I'll make I'll like t- give the tale just so we don't take up so much time. Um, since the beginning, uh, tell who who Deimos, who Euphemia uh, are, and how this all got started. And then, shock. Oh yeah, Ashok too. Uh, Ashok's the quiet one. I whisper, um, and then. I'll tell him about my dream that I had of Bahamut and Tiamat and stuff as well. I raise my hand and I say, I saw Tiamat. She seems to be almost alive-ish. Okay. Zerobor says, Now this, he says, is beginning to make sense. You all saw a vision of Tiamat. Or saw her, you say. Yeah. And you know of what happened to us on mm-hmm. that day when the gods descended from heaven and struck down our kind. Just a couple of them. Caused us all to flee as our children and our kin died and screamed in their own blood. Yes, we did flee. We hid. My mate and I to the fires below, Shaylin to the ice, and others as well. He looks at you all, he says, and it took an incredible act to, re- to p- call us from our slumber. Says, By being here, we risk the wrath of the gods who struck us down in the first place, but we have slept too long. I believe fates have decided that if we are to act, we must do so now. The time is near. Tell me, do you know why the gods struck us from the heavens, from the skies? I do not. Which ones? It, he says, Melchior. And Anukis. Sound like a dicks. history on that one, Anukis. Um, go ahead and roll a religion check. I'm sure I won't, but who knows? Maybe we're rolling it. Nope. No, you don't know. know what? He's I'm even less proficient. familiar to you then. I'm proficient in religion. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. It must All have right. been in the. The Report. dragon gods of dragons of Elwyn. Right, <laughs> gods right. of so, Elwyn. So. Alright, Elwyn. Elwyn. Elwyn, Elwyn. <laughs> Do I even want to know? Something in the back of your mind, as he mentions Anukis, Anukis, it's just ting- it's just like triggering some, some, some ancient, you know, draconic scroll that you had read. Um, we had saw him mentioned. Anukis, oh, Anukis, um, and and you'd seen, and you just remember just like a half of a phrase where you saw something that looked like the word Anukis in, in Draconic mentioned, and um, um, and it was paired uh, with something that indicated the god of death. Now, um, you're not quite sure, but you do know that in the current age. 
Um, there is one god who, who claims to be the god of death. He goes by the name of Merkel. Of Merkel. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this, I know I don't know, but is he known to be alive or dead? Um, as far as you know, um, you have not heard anything of him. Is Baylor and Merkel like the same guy? I'm just trying to, sorry, out of character. Baylor? Yeah, Baylor, isn't he like out of death? Baylor's um, a demon. Baylor is yeah, Bail okay, Bail Bail is a yep. is a is like a. a sorry like about a, that. I am honestly thinking of a different a game rock. right now for some like crazy reason. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops to doops. Okay. okay. The so he says, the... Go on. I just I have the book open because I was curious. Oh, about sorry. Him. I meant Bane. Bane. God of tyranny. Bane is the god of tyranny. Oh, okay. Merkel is the god of death. It. Okay. Yes. If anyone is curious, the god of the dead specifically is um, Kalimbor. Kalimbor, yeah. Okay. All right. Man, you guys are nerds. Okay. Open to the page because I'm making a cleric, so I want to yeah, know what yeah. god he's going to follow. All right. Yeah. So he says, he says they struck us from the heavens. Melchior and Anukis. They slew our kin and our children before us. Um, even those that we follow, the very the very deities of dragon kind, Bahamut, Tiamat, slain or dragged away in chains. Yes, we fled, but they struck us down because they feared what we might become. They wanted to us to unsee that which we had seen. The greatest amongst us had glimpsed beyond the stars and found found the one. The one whom, from whom all power in this world in this creation emanates. The one who reigns above the gods. We had found him, and he had found us. And they feared that we might surpass them, so they destroyed us. Who's that greater one that you're talking about? <clears throat> he goes by no name that tongue can pronounce, or that you would know. In fact, I know little of him myself, or even if, or even if he exists, I myself did not see in a pa beyond the stars. Only the greatest amongst us did. He would be the one to ask. If if he was still alive. And who was that? The greatest amongst us. The eighth of the seven. Seven but what? Of the, um, the dragon monarchs, the, the elder ones. A big list of dragon names about a couple sc scrolls up. No, Bahamut was was he who was um, was appointed to be our deity. We the seven are dragons in in flesh and blood. Okay. What happened to that eighth dragon? Um, Mirex comes up and she says, "We don't know." Long before the rending occurred, he had always been, he had always seen the world his own way. He was the greatest amongst us, not in power, but in foresight and in thinking. 
He went off on his own path. He, the brother of Nebularos himself. And we heard not tale or, or tell of where he disappeared to. Then when the rending occurred, we ceased looking. Oh, he's probably alive. Jesus. That would be a surprise to me. But if anyone knows, Nebularos would. He's probably got the longest way to come, doesn't he? She says, Perhaps. Although some will have to travel from quite far away. She looks up to the sky. She says, And some from not quite so far. And, so and, there and, and, you have the recent... I'm sorry, go ahead. Go on. No, go on. What'd you say? Oh, no, I was just going to tell the dragons. And there you have the reason for us um, calling and asking for your assistance. We're on similar paths, and I'm going to look over to Antares. But... We wish the world... We wish not to destroy the world in the process. It's our difference. An opinion. He doesn't care as long as the demons die. She nods. Shaylin steps forward and says, He has already asked us what he would of us. She says. And when the council arrives, when we have a, our quorum, we will discuss it. And then she looks up at the sky, as, as Mirex is as well. And she says, As it seems we do now. And she 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 sneers. She says, "He al Proctinic always did have a flair for the theatrical." Um, at that point, the the whole dr summit um, is covered as like in cloud cover. You, you you guys barely notice it, but the clouds had been rolling in, and what was previously just like a grayish day, and that has now grown dark, as as thunder and lightning begins to crackle across the sky. Um, you're talking dark, thick clouds um, at the, um, high above the summit. They all look, and Zerbor and Mirex stand tall, and they look up at the sky as well. And Zerbor says, Yes, here he comes. He sighs a little bit. He says, Always cared to make an entrance, didn't he? And all around, you see Dragonborn around um, begin to look up at the sky and shudder, and, and they gasp. And the the creatures and these flying little drakes and fl and and um, and, cre and they all they all scatter backwards. Some of them, uh, the ground based ones, burrow into the rock. Other ones fly and scatter around the the summit. And and you can see that there's they're very much dis disturbed and disoriented. As you guys feel that the air shift, um, like almost like the pressure in the air shifts. Um, there, it's it's like there's a, a charge of electricity that begins to just like like, like the static electricity in the air just like rises. You see a couple of lightning strikes echo boom through the air and strike the top of the summit around you, and the darkness intensifies, and then, descending from the clouds, you see a massive premonition. Ooh. I assume he's blue then? This is Practinic. Their colors are long gone. Um, when they went into their into hiding, they they their forms changed to become one with the very elements that they or of the, of the or the of the area that they they fled to. They've been there for thousands of years, and they had to ad adapt forms that were no longer um, would no longer draw the attention of the gods who were hunting them. So they all adapted. They all evolved. This is no longer a dragon of blue or white or whatever. This is a dragon of storm and wind. This is Practinic, king of the air. Was he blue then? Um, I don't even know. I didn't even have it written down. I guess so. And it's because um, she's white. The other queen, what you said, was silver to 
Elwyn at an earlier point, so blue would make the most. I would. I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm just curious. Let's say he's blue. All right. So he drops down out of the sky, right? And he and he's coming down, and his his claws and talons just sh- shred the ground. He's larger than Shaylin was in her form. His wings encompass the whole, like like a large portion of the entirety of the summit, and you hear his booming voice just kind of echo through, through the um the wind and and the the, the, the swirling, uh, torrent of, of of rainfall and and lightning that's crashing all around you. It says, "Brothers, I have arrived. It has been far too long." Zerobor just kind of speaks back to him in his in his calm t- uh, calm voice. He says, "It has indeed, Praktinik. Know you of where Krigajard is, or have he- you heard of Tayafensia or Nebularos? We know not of their of their state." Tayafensia will arrive when she deems it appropriate. Flighty bitch has always been on her own time. Krigajard, he will be here shortly. You will know it. And what of our king, the leader of, of us all, Nebularos? He comes from afar. I saw it in the sky. But it will be some time. He has many, many spans to travel. I see. Then perhaps we should discuss our business before he arrives, if it is of the essence. Alright. Anything you guys want to do or say? Does the king need to be here for a quorum? I'm asking you as a DM, not as Albrecht. Does the king need to be here for a quorum? Um, Zero Bo- or Myrek says, "Just technically no, but for matters of great importance, we will wait for his word." She says, "As this request that Antares here has asked of us, says, it would require all of our strength and much more, I believe." And what is that his request? Says. Antares has asked us to destroy she says to destroy the ley line the way by which the demons rise into the sky, into the, uh, the realms of the heavens um Shailen says foolishness but it is what he wants. What will happen if all the islands are destroyed? Zerbor says, <laughs> says um, "It's foolishness, not because it cannot be destroyed. It is foolishness because we lack the power to do so." You see, says, you would not know this, but we do. She is here on this plane. She is alive, even if we saw her die. And she guards the ley line. Again, what would happen if the ley line was destroyed? Is there a secondary consequence? That is far beyond my knowledge. Well, will all gods become quiet because no one can talk to them anymore? Because without the ley line, people can't talk to the gods? The ley line is the portal that the demons opened to, for them to, to go from the, the abyss um, up to heaven. It has to pass Wait. through the material plane. Hold on a second. So is he asking to destroy the material plane? No, he's, he's just asking them to destroy the portal. 
putting but, I'm yes. putting two and two together here. They said she guards the ley line. Don't we know of a certain um what's her face? Succubus bitch. Yeah, a certain succubus guarding a portal. Oh god damn it. Midas, if you made her a fucking super crisis dragon, Damus is gonna cry on the inside. <laughs> Zero Boy says <laughs> No, 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 oh. no. Well, oh, okay. No, I was scared for No. Me. We talk did... of Tiamat. Oh. Oh, oh it's still not. Well, much. no, yeah. Is it, that, that means Tiamat has become a succubus. That's what I'm getting from that. No, 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 no. There was like one of those four horsemen. And there was already a succubus before Tiamat came out. Ooh, I thought Tiamat had become a succubus. And if that happened, I don't even fucking know what would happen. We got Were Trask, yeah. Succubus I Dragon, just, you saw, I just you saw, plane shift. Oh, Demon Halflings. I don't know what's next. You saw, you, 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 I mean, you guys saw that Tiamat. When you saw Tiamat, um, she was definitely under the complete control of Asmodeus. Um, yeah. And if if she is the guardian that Asmodeus has placed in front of the ley line, then that, that, that you know definitely makes sense. Um, and Mal if Malkanthet is around, she probably is working in there somehow with whatever else is around. That's it. One one hundred percent. Tiamat is not the succubus, but yeah. the ley line and yeah. the portal that we know in whatever it's They're called. They're both Norton. there. Tiamat and Malkanthet are both there at that. Um, in, in, at the portal, and you guys know that it's line somewhere up in portal, Ratnesh. Same. Yes. Can we ask the dragons if we can all just bum rush that portal? Question though, who's Tiamat? I don't know who that Tiamat is. <laughs> dragons. Yes. Google it. <laughs> Google Tiamat. <laughs> How do you not know the D and D lore? Because well, I don't know all of it. I'm most of it. Some of it. I literally had to have like. Do I have to know everything to play D and D? Yeah, level nine fucking party and level ten party yesterday. Pretty much fight a dragon with Tiamat stats, and they still beat the shit out of it. Was that what was what we yeah. fought yesterday? I literally reskinned Tiamat and just only used the green thing, and you literally just beat the fuck out of it. I don't know. I was dead most of the time. <laughs> oh no no no! He has like lasted to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Tiamat is the is the god of dragons, is the 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 six the five headed god of the dragons, her and Bahamut. In in normal lore, she's the evil goddess. She rules the uh, chromatics, um, whereas yeah. Bahamut rules the metallics. So all in normal lore, all uh, chromatics, so red, white, blue, green, and black are evil, and then the metallics are good. Okay, normal, I think about. I knew about Bahamut and the, the, the color differences, but I didn't know. But so Tiamat is the is the sister of Bahamut. She's his his equal. She's very much a god, you know. So. Also, um, just another quick thing about normal lore. In normal lore, she's been banished to the first level of hell and causes Asmodeus <laughs> problems there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in this world, Esmodius yeah, has her on a chain, and she is doing his bidding. All right. Okay. So, so as and Terry's has asked them to destroy the portal. They say, and, and what Zerbor just told you is that they can't because Tiamat is there. So I'm just summing up what we just said. We just covered. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a we long side tangent. Destroy the portal and uh, save Tiamat. It's just that Isn't it better to ask for something that they can actually do. See, Antares doesn't that, know that. I'm saying that to Antares. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know. Well, he's not with us right that. now. He's not with us right now. He's still standing away. I know. I, I know. He was just talk to us. First, we get the money. Then we get the power. And then we get the bitches. Oh yes, yes, that plan. That, that's that's the plan. Fantastic plan. <laughs> Let's open up like literally the best brothel ever. I love that, right that plan. <laughs> do it in Euphemia's temple. Which I call it Euphemia Land. It has roller coasters. <laughs> it's classy, actually. All right, what are you guys doing? Can we ask? 
well, shoot, we're probably way outclassed here. I don't know if we could ask them, but uh, you like, yeah, hey, we've made our there's... request. We got to, we just got to wait now. Yeah, we have okay. made requests. We're you not paying attention to Elwin and nope. Deimos's, okay. um, Deimos's, uh pictures. You guys didn't ask. You were, you were, con you were communicating. Yeah, I don't think you asked. Right. Um, I don't think you asked then. anything. You see, Deimos. remember, light is. You guys gotta remember, light is our, our thing. So he hasn't asked to call the donation. Your sponsor. Yeah. He isn't. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't care about us. This other. Yeah, one. she doesn't. But we've had we did. I seem to get some respect out of the the married couple. Yeah, because we've actually seen them before. Yeah. No. I don't believe they've asked for a sponsor or anything. They asked yeah. us what we wanted. Took as our request. I, we didn't ask for something specific, but we basically asked for help. Yeah. We didn't ask for, you know, the destruction. Well, Dame was kind of asked for the destruction of Grimash, oh. but. Yeah, but that's what I think our DM just said that we haven't asked anything yet. Yeah, I, don't yeah, know what I, you guys I haven't gotten any about. official requests from you guys. Damos has been no. walking up and he's pulling out these pictures. Um, we ask for help in saving the world. If we save Getting the world first... Oh, can, oh, 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 I just remembered something. I'm going to show them my staff and say um, that one of the most powerful of your kind Wait a second. Um, put imbued their soul in this weapon and it has served me very well and I have served it in return um, I was told that you guys can make it more powerful do we know which uh, that lost dragon that's quote unquote dead what color it was no which one? Oh man hope it's uh, not a red um, dragon um, it's a okay so um, Elwyn you pull out your staff and you show it to them and Zerabor holds up his hand um, and, and, like in, in a and as you say that, Zerbo holds up his hand as if he were saying no, um, and Shaylin screams. She she echo she 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 raises her head and she she lets out this this like ear splitting howl, like it's just filling the room. Um, just just this, this this penetrating blast of 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 frozen and 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 just pent up like just like rage. Uh, and you and you guys are all just like thrown down to the ground and flattened, and her eyes are wild now. She looks at you, Ellen. It's been on my back like these all this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but as you brought it out and, and you've explained what it is, yeah. Um, I'm I'm like looking like whoa. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, she comes out. She says, "Go on." Oh no, nothing. I'm waiting. <laughs> no, my my question, my quick funny question. As I uh, like uh, put my finger in my ear and try to you know clear it out, does frost come out? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. And now she's looking at you all, at, at, at you, Owen. Her eyes flashing red, and she says. I thought you had brought it here. I thought I recognized its scent. But now I see it for clear. You, you would bring my soul back to me. After it had been wrenched from me. After the pain and anguish I had been dragged through. Um, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think she wants to kill you. I'm just okay. So she se she takes a step forward to you, Owen. Her eyes just locked on. I am yes. not backing down. I'll puff out my chest and open my wings. I with you and that thing. 
Well, then what is it you want? I guess I'm not understanding. So you're asking her what she wants? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I, I thought she wanted the staff, but then she says she doesn't. Man, no, women, she said I'm get telling away you. from her. She said get away from her. That's what she said. Oh, to get away from her. Okay, yeah, I'll get away from her. So are you stepping back? What are you doing? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a few steps back. Okay. As you do, she starts to calm down a little bit, and, and the, the wind and, and roaring around her kind of begins to subside. Um, she's still looking at you, her, you know, her um, very intensely. She's breathing heavily. Her hands are clenched and fists at her sides. Zara Boy says, Perhaps a word. He says, He says, Shaylin. Please, calm yourself. This is not a place for violence. Alright. Um, okay, um, so what's going on? I'm going to ask him once I get away. Um, Mirex says, 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 That part of her represents all the hate and pain In her, in her, that that in, that filled her soul. Yes. Long ago, long, long ago, Shaylin befriended a human, and uh -huh. she says, and when that and they, well, how, how I say this, she befriended a human. And they were close. They were as kin to each other. There, there was not one without the other at any place in time. And through the course of that human's lifespan, something horrible happened. Something horrible happened to her that Shaylin could not stop. And it broke Shaylin as she mourned the death of her friend this human an anger rose up in her that neither of us had ever seen before and truly a large part of the world died that day as Shaylin and her dragon flight unleashed fire and ice across the land it was a war that dwarfed all others before the rending at the end of that battle Shaylin found herself deeply conflicted the hate within her the fire as it were wishing to tear apart this world and seek the death of all of mankind in vengeance for what had happened to her her child as she had come to know her known her but at the bidding of the rest of us she put that part of, away she divided her soul and split it in two taking every ounce of hate and fire and banishing it away from her that is what you contain in your staff right now and that is why she wants nothing to do with it I'll take a, a deep breath and say if it causes her so much pain and if she wishes it destroyed um, I am I am no one to say that she can't do that and I'll put it on the ground Um, at this point, Shaylin steps up to you and says, "Oh, and Zara and um, Zara Boy says she cannot destroy it any more than she can take destroy herself. But that staff represents everything that she hates about this world, about humanity, 
and about herself. It would be best if she d if she were not around it. She lends steps forward now, she says. Wait. What is this thing to you? She points to the staff on the ground. It, it, but it, it's but a tool that has allowed me to help, to do a lot of good in this world. I, I, I cannot say I'm not, a, I'm not attached to it because I am, but in the end of the day, it's just a tool, and it's replaceable. She looks. She says, "I doubt it." Um, so your staff requires you to be to unlock the second step of it. It requires you to have the to attain the blessing of the dragon who gave its soul to empower it. Right. Right. And what I'm trying to say is that, um, as much as as cool as it is, and you know, everything, that if she is, I mean, if it causes her too much pain and she doesn't want it. You know, I'm cool with, with her not being okay with this. But if she gives her blessing, then cool too. <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. cool That's if she gives awesome. her blessing. So, so right now, she's not really inclined to give you her blessing. You need to convince her, based on the story I just told you, what it, what it meant to her. So basically, the girl that she had befriended um, was killed. Killed horribly and brutally. And Shaylin unleashed... Um, this is back before the rending. Um, a war that tore apart, you know, many nations in this world. This dragons ri um, just ripped apart humanity in vengeance, and that the uh, rest okay, of the, the dragon council um, forced her or, or or calmed her down and asked her to 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 change this. So before every before the before the whole world was like embroiled in war, so she yeah. she took the part of her soul that was filled of hatred and vengeance and fire. And ba and banished it from her, and somehow it ended up in your staff. Okay. So that's 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 that. So that's the, the nature of the situation. You have to okay, try to figure it. out a way to to convince her to give you her blessing. Okay. I'm gonna say Shaylin. Uh, in and in, in my book in the story, did it actually say the 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 girl's name, the human? Um. Yeah. If not. Yeah, it did. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call her something. Uh, I didn't I hadn't made it up yet. Hold on. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do, what do you want to call her? <laughs> um, let's see. I have a website. I just go for random names real quick whenever I need one. Sure. Name her. Go ahead and name her. Let's call her Sophia. Okay. Um, after hearing the story and like pretty much understanding what, you know, thanks for explaining it to me because if not, I wouldn't have gotten it. Um, I will say, Shaylin, now that I understand your pain in seeing this, I want you to know that if it's any consolation, anything good that has come out of the tragedy that you suffered, is that with this weapon, I have been able to save countless innocent lives that would have suffered a lot if I didn't have this in my position. So in your pain, there has been a lot of good that was that has been able to to get done so it wasn't all for nothing and now i appreciate oh. this even more okay. knowing where uh where it came from all right so she's gonna roll an insight check i want you to roll a persuasion check too sure dragon <laughs> That's a plus five. Then. Yeah, so go ahead and roll your persuasion check. Did I get the advantage because of the dragon thing? 
No, it's cool. I got lucky. Mm, nah, that's just go out straight. Okay. She's gonna... She, you know, her, her rage is has subsided a little bit. She says, Who have you saved? Who have you defended with that staff? There's actually um, many. The whole town, the whole city of Ospium, 50,000 souls. But I know you're looking for someone that means something to me. And I will show it. I will show her to you. I'll pull out my my crystal ball, and I'll mm -hmm. try to scry on uh, Eloise, and I will show her my dwarf buddy. Okay. Someone I care deeply for, that I would not have been able to save without this. Putting her in the buddy zone. That's harsh. And uh, you know it's. <laughs> I would say that out loud. By the way. <laughs> Okay, so you show her the picture of, of Eloise. Roll another persuasion check. I want her to give you a, a weird look because you're a half-elf and she's a dwarf. I just want that. That's all I need. She says. And who... She says she regards you for a second. Um, the cold around her begins to dissipate slightly. All around you, everyone is drop-dead quiet. Even Zerbor and Merix are just standing there watching. Practinic and all his grandeur and splendor is just like hovering over you. Not hovering, but like his wings and just looming over you guys just watching. The dragonborn and even the creatures around you, hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds of them, are all just like, you could hear a pin drop. She says, And who have you slain with that staff? Owen? Can't hear you. Oh, damn it, I've been muted that whole time. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to say, um, you will definitely know Eshek the Lich that terrorized the town of Ospium. Also, the demon um, Clovis was taken down thanks to this staff, along with my, the, my friends. But it gave me the power I needed to slay. Forget about zombie pirates. Um, uh, Alright, so roll another oh. persuasion check. Yeah. Go on. No, no, I was going to say the, the dragon dude, but no, I got the staff from the dragon dude. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> lucky that. I will lucky that. God damn it. Okay. She says, I don't care about your demons. She says, what humanity, what mankind have you brought low with that staff to defend this girl you've shown me and all these others you've spoken of? What monsters of morality have you laid low? Uh. There was, uh, let me tell you exactly how it happened. You see these dwarves uh, as a race where they had a prejudice against people using magic thanks to a misguided king. With this staff, we were able to change their views, bring them out of the dark, and uh, have a whole race of people uh, from being enslaved by madness, we brought the light to them and freed them from the darkness over their eyes. Okay, roll another persuasion check. Man, she's really ASCII. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm not saying what that... she wants to hear. <laughs> no, this is all cumulative. She has one more question for you, she says. And you will continue to defend those who are unable to defend themselves? Of course, that's pretty much the motto of the, of the group. We wouldn't be here <laughs> asking for your help. We wouldn't be here 
uh, in this situation uh, if we didn't want to help. Of course I will. I will always will. She says. She looks at Zerabor and Mirex. She says. Then so be it. She I turns up to Practinic and she says, she says to him, step back. And Practinic, um, you hear this whole mountaintop shudder as he lifts his wings um, and f and backs off, like like a couple big big swoops of his wings, and he backs off into the air, f hovering off the ground, flapping these, these monstrous wings above the ground. As Shaylin closes her eyes, and her skin begins to frost over, um, and she um, and you see what she truly looks like—not her form of frost and rage that you saw when she summoned the. Um, um, when she made the call, but really mm -hmm. what she what she truly looks like um, as she begins to grow, and this is the Shaylin that that befriended the gir the young girl so long ago. She begins to grow. Her 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 form shapes and and again co um, made completely of ice. Her wings stretch out, um, and but a lot more gentle, a lot more. Um, a lot less threatening than she was the first time you saw her. Um, large, every bit as as imposing as Practinic. A little bit smaller than him, but the 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 aura of of power and of authority that flow through her um, are every bit as imposing. Oh, that's a cool picture. Okay, and Ooh. she looks at you all, and she says. Uh, she looks at you, Elwyn. Um, I'm going to say she knows your name because you introduced yourself to her. He says, Then, Elwyn, sorcerer of dragonkind, defender of humanity, slayer of evil, says, I bid you well as you continue on your quest to save those who cannot fend for themselves. I, Shaylin of ice and fire, give you my blessing. Oh my okay. God! Uh -huh. Your um, you you feel the 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 staff in her hand begin to begin to tremble and vibrate as it radi as her eyes glow bright glistening white. And and one eye is flaring white, like like this bluish white ice. Her other eye is 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 flaring red, like deep, powerful flame. And both of them are begin to the light of both of her eyes begins to 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 shine on your staff. The staff begins to warp and change. Um, the the inscriptions and the gold um, um, em emblemation all around it on the staff um, flake off, and the head of the staff. Um, begins to animate even um, it, it, was, it was like this red dragon staff before but now it's becoming like this twin combined like two two imagine two smaller staffs one red one blue twisted together braided together that's that's what the staff is it, it becomes to, to change into and at the head you, at the top of it instead of one red head uh, red dragon head you see two twin faces of roaring dragons um, teeth one of blue and one of red all right nice. so I mean if you want I put in a plus two staff of striking the, the 1d4 fire damage and a crit I think <laughs> uh -huh. that would be a, a good thing for that staff shh 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 <laughs> <Bad -ass, laughs> no. All right, here. After the D100 and the D400 or something from the Ishaq's book. Yeah, no, trust me on this one. <laughs> this is what you have now. Oh, gross. It should be ice and flame. Actually, let me change that. I changed this a while ago. There we go. Oh, shit. Murder somebody with that. Oh, yeah. Yes, this is my next form. Okay. 
So I'm going to delete oh, your old shit. staff from your inventory. Uh huh. Staff of Dragonkin is no more. It is replaced by Drakessa Shaylin's Fury. All right. Two D one hundred plus a hundred. Can you fire? Both so does that make sense? How it works? Uh, I'm finishing reading it right now, but you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two beams basically, and the and um, the way I imagine these beams, these are not little beams. These are like. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. These are what these beams look like. Uh, From Men in Black. Here. Hold on, shit. <laughs> I, I, I should have looked this up beforehand. Oh, shit. That's, that's pretty cool. The, um... Uh, did an additional 66 fire damage. Like, damn, that's pretty fucking good. So um, you can you, you can summon the beams, and they both um, come out at the same time. All right, These huge, please. massive beams, and um, you you channel them, and you can basically like point one of them at one person or or uh, two different people or two at the same person, right? And th it happens for one round, and you see the effects there. But then um, if you pay the sorcery point cost. You can channel them for one additional round afterwards. Uh, the total of four beams. Well, the two beams they just stick around for another round, and you can four redirect targets. them afterwards. Okay, hold on, or hold on. All, so, all of them on one target. So the two beams are unleashed at once, right? Correct. They both okay. uh, they both blast out at the same time, concurrently, two beams at the same time, one from each okay. head on your dragon staff. And if I spend 20 sorcery points, I can keep it going? For one more round, yeah. Okay. Well, I gotta get to level 20 before I can do that. Okay, that so the beams, they, they, they're, they're huge beams. They're like, you know, you guys ever play the original X-Men Capcom game? And Cyclops, he does his, like, mega optic blast. They're these huge, oh, okay. like, 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 Kamehameha-type beams. That's pretty sweet. Okay. It's over my head. You know Kamehameha? Dragon Ball Z? Yeah. What are you talking about? Nope. Right. Oh, I you watched Dragon Ball Dragon Super. Ball. Oh my gosh, guy. I haven't watched it. I heard it's really good. So fucking good. It's one I want to get into, but I don't know where to find it. It's Not literally Netflix, is it? the best because it. Yeah, but I won't ruin it. It's super fucking good, though. Okay. Well, one uh, more I'll question. Watch it. Yeah. Does um, does it still have the tier one ability, or does it just transform yes. into the tier two? No, it does. Tier one is still there. Okay. Uh, tier two is a separate ability. Does it go back down to twenty four d six, or do you want me to keep it at twenty seven? Because on its on there, it only sets plus additional sixty six. Remember, you no, had it changed be, it. it. It should be twenty seven. Yeah, here, I'll make it seventy six. Yeah, it should. It should. Be, the tier one ability should not be changed. Okay, um, so it's an extra ninety six then. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Oh, shit, Alright. We got a thousand more enemies to go. Alright. Okay. So, um... As the... As, as that happens, um... After, you know, in the aftermath of this, of this awakening of your staff, um... You see the dragon born around you, just all kind of very much odd and um and Terry's has his kind of emotionless face kind of under the hood of his hat you can't really tell Shaylin is um af after that all goes down she she seems a little bit more at at ease I'll say all right Zerabor and Mir or Mirix comes to you and says well that was well timed. I'd never seen her at rest, but I think now she may be able to find some peace, knowing that what she has been through, the torment she has suffered, was not all for naught. Please, 
well, I'd advise you. Do not betray your word. I will not. Okay. Um, and that's what happens. The um, the the four of them stand around and they they, they talk. Um, you hear them talking about the impossibility of assaulting the ley line, especially with Tiamat there, um, because of the power that she still wields over them. They've grown and they've changed. They're much more powerful than they've ever been before. But um, Tiamat is still the goddess of dragons. And even though there are almost no more dragons in the world, she would have them within her thrall. Um, so that's why they, they can't um, fulfill Antares's request. We don't know of any actual physical repercussions to this material plane if the ley line is destroyed. Um, you don't know of any or the lack of any. You're not sure. They don't know either. I mean, they, they didn't build the ley line. Yeah. Okay. The next dragon who arrives... Uh, Asmodeus opened it up. Oh. Oh. Some time goes by. We're talking. Can I ask the um the fire sure. people if they know anything about the moon day uh, or the um, noonday moon? Okay. So what are you saying to them? Uh, I'll go wander up to them, I guess, and I'll just ask them if I can ask them a question. Okay. Um. Zerabor leans over um, as they're all waiting. They're all basically just they're standing there, still talking. But you know, a couple hours later, when they've all all stopped, the, the they've taken up uh, a loose formation around. Practinic does shrink down to a more manageable size, so he's not just lording over everything. Um, he does have a human <laughs> form. I just don't have a picture for it. Um, so they're all just in, a, in like a loose array at the center of this of this large podium and you come over and you talk to Zerabor and Mirex and um, Zerabor says what is it that you seek I can see the question in your eyes you've had it for quite some time yes I've been looking for something that's called the noon day moon I was wondering if you dragons have ever heard of such a thing Mirix says, We've not heard it called that, but we know of which you speak. And he has not arrived yet. Zerabor says, This goes back far into our history. In a time when the dragons were at such odds with each other. Some petty feuds between flights had grown greater, and another war, another genocide, was at hand. A sign was needed. A sign was needed to hail the dawning of a new age, one in which the lords of the dragon flights would come together and instill peace. This was the time in which our greatest progress was made, this time of peace. When our, our magic, when our power, when our knowledge grew by leaps and bounds. And it is when, during this time, it is when we looked beyond the stars and incurred the wrath of the gods. But the sign that heralded this age was none other than the king amongst kings, Nebularos himself. He flew up, greatened his essence, and blotted the sun from the sky. That, I believe, is the sign you are looking for. Mm. 
Oh well. I'm gonna sigh heavily. Okay, thank you very much for that information. So this is the next day when you, when you have this conversation, and as you finish that conversation up, um, um, Praktinik says, says, another is here. And Shaylin says, yes, I felt him coming as well. And the ground the, 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 the this mountain at the top is on shudders and shakes. So basically, um, you guys are part of a mountain range. Or this is part of a mountain range, and you guys see basically a mountain <laughs> walking towards you, moving towards you. Um, its footfalls are not—it's uh, not like heavy pounding footfalls, but it's like the rolling, thunderous um, cacophony of 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 like like a downhill. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Rock slide, basically, is what is what it sounds like, as this this mountain begins to begins to move closer, and, and it's it's you know it's, it was a hillside that um you, you guys hadn't seen there the, the day before, and as this mountain approaches, every bit um, visible from the summit, the summit still towers above it, but this is very much a, a like a sister mountain in size, it begins to begins to break apart and unfold. Um, so this this creature is very much larger than that than the than the appearances of the dragons that you've seen so far, and as it does, um, what makes what previously might have been a dragon begins to appear as the rocks begin to fall away. Um, you see the semblance of eyes open up. You see what could be taken for wings and legs begin to unfold from the mountain itself. Um, as grass and trees begin to fall off of it, all that's left behind is the bone and the structures of rock underneath. This is Cricket Shard. Oh, that looks a lot like Guild Wars 2. I don't know. Shh. Alright. Very good fight, though. Fun dragon. Okay. As Cricket Shard approaches, and he... he he looms. You see him step up onto the mount itself and hoist and, and himself up so that his head looms above the edge of the dragon summit, right? And his voice booms across the plain. He says, "Brothers, I have arrived, yes. and I smell the scent of many mortals below. Yes. It has been eons since we last encountered each other." And he pauses. And we find ourselves surrounded by betrayers, by perpetrators. And you hear this booming echo as the as the mountain you're on shakes itself. He says, "Never fear, I will crush them." All right. Um, but at this point, rocks begin to fall down all across this this plain, and Zerbor and Mirix are are um, are startled, and and Shaylin is startled as well. And Deimos, you see, and Elwyn, and um, and the rest of you guys, you all see this huge dragon head swing around, and its eyes focused on you, Deimos. It's focused on you specifically. Where? Just you. Just he, he, he zooms in on you. He says, "I smell the blood of my son dripping off your hands." What? I took a shower. Okay, I would not say that. Um, I'm like, what? That doesn't sound what like something I would do. Um, first off, I never killed anything that did not attack me first, except for that one time. Remember. Don't even worry about that one time. And there's that old one, and there's another. Don't even worry about that other one time. Damos is he's not gonna lie. <laughs> Damos is choice. thinking. Damos is thinking, and he says, "Yes." I, if, it, if he's thinking back, he's like dragon, rock, um, bad mean dude. 
And you know what? Dave will take the blame for this, guys. He's taking all the blame. And he's going to say that, uh, that, uh, yeah, um, there was a, uh, I guess a, a rock dragon of, I guess, somewhat resemblance to you who attacked us pretty much out of the blue and, uh, defeated him in glorious, glorious combat. Um, but Damos did not start it. And Damos is not lying. <laughs> Damn it, Santa. I'm sorry. This is damn it. Seven what charisma. You... I'm not. I'm, ain't no bard. Which, uh, which one was trying this? Trying to remember. Oh, the it's cave from giant? The, yeah. Oh, Dan was wow. going to say, he's just like, he's just like, we even, tr I think we even tried to reason with him. And he just decided to go uh, beat, try to beat the shit out of us. Was this during the summer? I mean, the this was in Modrin's temple of the yeah. second temple, where we actually found the real Modrin. Yeah. Yeah. Dam Dam this was this was one of uh, Tempest's assignments to Deimos. Don't worry about this. <laughs> was I there um, for it? Um. I don't. I don't know if you were a shock. I don't think you were. No. It was early summer. It was early summer. So, Deimos is gonna he's gonna say that stuff as he's standing there. He says, "I'm not. I, he he didn't need to die. All that type of cool stuff, but he did attack and we did fight. Damos, don't lie." Okay, so you're you're saying that he it was self defense that he attacked you. I mean, he did attack us. Did yeah, I'll stay behind Damos. Yeah, mm -hmm. and his his little buddies too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so this this guy is he 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 rears up and you see a massive, you know, the, the size of a hillside, paw like like claw just raise up above you, um, and he's 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 he he raises it high above his head. All around you, dragonborn are sc are screaming. They're running towards the edges of the plateau. Um, Zerbor and Mirix and, and Shaylin and the rest of them are all just like caught up in 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 in, in and all this flare and this massive, this massive dragon claw above you, and he's he's getting ready to swing it, to swing it down and smash down, uh, bring it basically to just flatten the whole plateau. All right, um, Zerabor calls out a command and says, "Krigajard, stop! You know our rules. This is not a place for bloodshed." All right. Um, Damos, I need you to make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, mm. yeah. So there's no way I can guide that, can I? Oh, yeah, you can guide it. Persuasion. All right. So for the minus two. Anything guide, else anyone I wants might... to do before he makes this persuasion check? Um, there's that. Um, and anyone Give else want to advantage. do anything? Advantage. Give him advantage just by assisting him, smiling nicely. All right, because Zerbor said. Um, called out his thing he uh, he, he Krigajard hesitated for a second but he's pretty upset i mean he knows he can smell the death of his his son over i think you're actually wearing some of his dragon scales or something I like don't that. even worry about that part <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you took a wing <laughs> off of him and you, you like you like worked it into a cape or, or something crazy <laughs> yeah yep yeah, totally did totally did <laughs> if not, not even uh, no, i'm just gonna stand there and smile nicely if and... if i see the oh. foot coming down um, uh -huh. Who else is around? Is it just me, Alberic, and Deimos under the foot? This this would crush um, a good portion of the plateau. So all of you guys, plus light, plus you know, Antares. You see, Antares just running off, just like backing off into the sky, so he'd be safe. Um, it would come down over Shaylin and Zerbor and Merix and the rest of them, but you you get the sense that they would be okay. All the okay. dragonborn are running and screaming, so it's a lot of creatures would be crushed okay if it starts coming down i'm going to teleport as many uh, of us as i can to not under the foot okay but damus is going to stand there and take it like a man right, Damus, you, you get advantage because zerobor chimed in that that no violence oh. was allowed at the top of this mountaintop all right guys and i'm taking damus if even if he wants to take it like a champ <laughs> i guess okay. what so, so 12 I, uh, 12 Hey, that is fucking good for Deimos. Uh, right, Deimos I'll, is, I'll, he's I'll not lying. He's not even trying to persuade. He's just be like, hey, he fought like a champ, and he attacked, and we fought, 
and stuff happen. You should be proud of your son. Just to see, just to see if you get through to him. He's 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 a very large, very enraged creature, um, and he is going against against his um, his better knowledge with um, with the rest of the dragon kings, the dragon elders. So um, this is his insight check. Oh, you lucky bastard! Oh shit. No, Dale was just telling the truth. There ain't nothing to insight, <laughs> kind of. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Because right. no, it's literally if, if he had beaten, his hand would have come down and, and hit the plateau. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, shit. Okay, so as with, with what you with your story that you just you just told, and with what Zerabor said, the claw, this massive claw, like they said, the size of a hill, um, stops in midair. Right, and and he turns to Zerabor and he says, "This creature slew my son. I demand vengeance." Zerabor says, "And vengeance is your right to exact, just not here. You know this, Krigashard." Krigashard says, "What of our law?" Written and lying useless for thousands of years. That time has passed. Who will enforce it? Will you enforce it upon me? Zerabor says, I will. And, and, and Mirik steps forward also. And so will I. Shaylin, Shaylin nods in your, dire in, in your direction, Elwyn, and says, for the sake of these mortals, I will as well. Bractinic, um kind of turns and says, I care not what happens to these people, or of the law that was coded long ago. I don't see Nebularos here to enforce it. Do what you will. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> like Kriegerschard that. says, <laughs> that's, that's his, his human form. Kriegerschard says, can you share that again? What the picture? Oh, no, not oh, that one. Practicing? I didn't. I didn't have a picture for. I didn't have one for for him. <laughs> I just made a human form. Um, Krigashard, he, he um, pausing and looking as Shaylin, Zerbor, and Merix are staring him down. His paw um, poised in the air, glaring hate at you, Deimos. He he looms in. His massive head comes rolling in, and he says. To you, he says, "You and I are not finished yet." Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, now, 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 hear me out on this one. Can we wait until the end of this gigantic god, whatever fucking fight? And then you can go sell the score with me. He says, "I will wait until you are not set foot on this mountain top." I think he's scared of you, Demos. I think he's scared of fucking Deimos. I can't blame him. Yeah, me either. Yeah, it, oh, what a chump. <laughs> Don't encourage him! <laughs> I'm, I'm, a back. Big, I'm a big scary dragon, but I can't hit a little man off a hill. Just I'm, joking. I'm not <laughs> saying I just, that. I'm <laughs> no. my big foot. I can't stomp now, on you. Yeah, if Deimos had a okay, high right charisma, I might say that. But seven, I definitely know that's not a good idea. Okay. All right, so Deimos, you have you definitely have unfinished business with Krigashar to take care of. Does he um, not like my game? <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not appreciate your cape. Um, Krigashar shrinks down, and um, he takes on the form of a. Oh, I'll use this picture. I've had this picture sitting around for a little while. His humanoid form will be this. Black. Like it. Okay. <laughs> it's the color that Demo sees as he gets stepped upon. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! I don't even want to know how much damage that would be. I don't know if D and D okay. has that many dice. So there's this dude. Uh, so that's what he looks like when he when he t he. You see the mo the mountain just begin to crumble in on itself, and he he shifts down to and it's a dragonborn <laughs> shape. So that's what he looks like. 
Um, still loading. Eh, still loading. Well, for anyone else. Sorry. Is yours still loading, Deimos? Uh, yeah, for right now. No, it's loading for me. Yep, there it goes. Sorry, I should have loaded it. It's like an orc dragonborn, dude. That's pretty fucking cool. Okay. All right. And over the course of the next Albert day, a couple of days, um, Teofensia eventually arrives. Made of water itself. Water? So he didn't come... Well, no, he came from space. He had to come from space. This is Teofensia. This is the last one oh. to arrive. As the sky grows dark, um, and this one takes a while. So by n by this point, you've been you guys have been here over ten days. Um, yeah, over ten days. But and by by the full fortnight, two weeks. Finally, in the middle of the night, you guys sense a shifting in a ch in in the sky, like you, you guys are, um, some of you are looking up at the stars, and then you guys see like a ripple in the sky, almost like you know, like a in, in Star in Star Trek, and when there's a cloaked ship above, you know, that that invisible ripple thing that you see in the sky, mm -hmm. or like in the movies, like Pre Predator, when he when he goes invisible, you can see it ripple, the light kind of like shape around his form. That's what you kind of see in the sky. As the stars distort and the the night sky just begins to bend and warp, and then you see the stars themselves, like almost like they're caught up in this inky blackness, curl up and form the the shape of wings, um, and this incredibly large being begins to descend from the sky. Um, you hear Zerabor and Mirik say, or Zerabor say, "He's arrived, the last of us. Who knew that we were all still alive?" All of us had found safe harbor in their various points across this material plane. As the king of the dragons, the head of the the um, the, the monarch, the elder monarch, uh, the elder dragon monarchs, um, begins to settle down. This is Nebularos. Give me one second. Uh, Damus is gonna start doing this to him as soon as he sees Nebularos. It's so cool. What's that in I the back? Really sell, like ten boxes. But what? So Why is there her wrestler in her picture as she's dancing? Oh no, Damus is. You have, you have to watch fucking... the video. You gotta watch the video. Oh. This is what he's doing to all those thing? dragons right now. Yeah, he's a, oh, you don't have to watch just like thing, ten seconds in. Oh yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm watching. Like, yeah, okay. I, I, you go like fifty percent in, then do it. That's where the good stuff happens. The first part sucks. Oh, oh, God. What, what we thought you were dancing. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's how I I, I woo them into thinking they're protected, and uh, then I fucking fucking suplex the shit out of them. Okay. All right. So the um. The dragon, the, the 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 seven dragon monarchs, um, the elders of their kind, have arrived. And by this point, at the base of the summit, is a full-on mass, um, ten thousand dragonborn um, creatures, drakes, and 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 um, and various permutations of lizards and, and that kind of thing. All around, thousands and thousands of them have gathered around the summit. By the time Nebularos arrives. When he sets down at the, at the at the peak of this mountaintop, you see the rest of the dragons in whatever form they're in. It could be their humanoid form or even their their full-on um, dragon form. They all bow their heads as Nebularos gracefully and gently settles down at the, atop the mountaintop. So is he a void dragon? Oh yeah. Just asking because those are like the coolest fucking dragons. Oh yeah, he's absolutely a void dragon. Hell, fucking yeah! Okay, he, you can see his his skin is made up of the darkness of the of the of, of the void, um, and you know all rippling through him are star, is starlight beads of starlight. It's badass. Okay, can we kill he him? He says, "No, we got a shadowish blue dragon. Oh. Void dragons are like badass on like twelve different levels higher." 
Alright. What's this badass? So these are yeah. 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 I hope I've made it clear bad. to you guys how, how how large and imposing and powerful these creatures are. <laughs> oh yeah. Um <laughs> I've, I've been trying yes. to communicate that to you. Okay. Luckily Damon is have a, a full stomach so he didn't shoot himself. Within this um within in this world, um within the lore of this world, um the dragons b before the rending were were looking so high and soaring so high that, that that the gods struck them down because they were they were afraid that they would supplant them, that they would surpass them, all right. And these dragons went into hiding after the rending. These were the greatest amongst them, while the while um, dragons everywhere were were dying, being slain by the gods, um, and they've they hid, basically, and off in um, in their elements for thousands of years. Off, secluded, um, and hiding, basically separated from their own kind. They changed, they evolved, and now um, they have been summoned back. And this is the first time that they have convened in over 6,000 years. And Neb as Nebularos's um, form touches down atop the, this mountaintop that you're on, he says, Let the meeting of the seven commence okay and all the dragons nod their assent they all say let it be all right so this is what we do nebularo says who will first speak who will ask of the Dragon Council? And Terry steps forward, walking side by side with Shaylin. He goes up and he presents his case and tells of of the lo the blood debt that Shaylin owes him, um, and says, "I desire." the demons be struck from this world and thrown from the heavens. I ask by the blood that Shaylin owes me that you destroy their entrance into this world and the gateway that carries them to the next. Tear it from this world, break it with fire and claw. That's what I ask. Nebularos says to them, what you ask is within your right. But for the seven here that stand before you, we are still bound by our gods. Even though our power is greater than ever, we cannot go against they who created us. While Tiamat lives, or while our bound, our our bond of servitude exists, we cannot stand against her or that which she protects. And Terry says, "Is there a way to break this bond that you speak of?" Nebulara says. The only one who could begin to dream of such is not here. The eighth of the seven may have known, but my brother has been lost to me for time uncountable. So for you, even though you are sponsored by one of our very own, we cannot grant your request. And Terry's um, stands stoically for a moment, and Shaylin kind of steps up, to, steps over to him, and says, um, "Perhaps if you ask another, in time, the count, the council will be able to reply um, agreeably." And then Shaylin and Antares step to the side, and Nebularos calls out, says, Who else 
will speak before the council. Kind of give Elwyn a nudge in the side. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll step forward. And, uh, and where is your sponsor, Elf? Um... <laughs> Hey, get hold over on, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, time out. All right, guys. Um, we would have had this little huddle, like while the dude was asking for his. I, I am. Um, there's two ways we can go about this. I can try to bullshit into, um, we don't have one, but we are worthy of the help because, um, you know, we've pretty much sacrificed friends. We've sacrificed so much to help the world. Why are you against um, using light? Because he's not a real dragon. So? Or we can use light. That's fine. I think I... Purely as a player, not as a character. I think we should use light because that would be more hysterical. Oh, what I would say. Okay, that's two. Deimos? Uh, Deimos wonders if... Okay, so he's not a real dragon, but he is kind of a dragon. Now, what happens if I'm wearing technically two different dragons? Am I also a dragon? <laughs> you will be eaten by a dragon. Oh, okay. Uh, Dave was just staying out of this one. Well, uh, if we're going to use light, then I think Euphemia should speak for us. I would agree. Okay. Okay. Light steps forward. He's, he comes up to you, Euphemia. He says, Mistress. Now is the time. I will gain. I, I will ga My presence will gain you a voice, but you must be the one who speaks. All right. Are you walking forward, Euphemia? Yeah, but um, what exactly should we be asking for? I'm asking. Oh. What do you guys want? I want to learn really cool dragon fighting moves. We need their help in the war to yeah. destroy the demons. Well, uh, I've great. heard. I just well, don't think they will have any interest in it. This is. I think they won't help with fight close that gate, but these guys are ridiculously powerful and strong. There's a shit ton of them too. Where this is what damage thinking. What if we kill? Can we kill that girl? The, no. the, the goddess. What if they? Uh, what if they like? Hit like the other major areas in the world, like to help so, like subside like those people in Waterdeep or like even a Haslin, even some of the weird rats, like hold them at bay or take out a lot of them. While we could focus on like that gate because they can't fight the gate, but if they can protect the world a bunch more while that's happening, that's something they could do because they're yeah, fucking basically we can have we them want... take out the rask. Yeah, at the so. Wertrask, take out the marked ones. Oh, white beard. Yeah, pretty much if they do um... all that stuff that. They are allowed to do. I don't think. Be. I don't think our um the, the god of gods will allow us to. I know. I to to say, defeat all maybe of our enemies. Them to helping us with <laughs> one of them. Hopes Look, and dreams. Um, if we can get them to hold back the armies, we'll take out the uh, like the leaders. Or base like yes, obviously Midas won't let us just send out dragon assassins. But this is what we want requested. To do I don't know. depends on Midas. I hear that and... Midas is a very generous new, once again, dad of a third child, and he'd be like, that's totally a cool thing. I'd totally let you guys have Dragon SS. It doesn't hurt to ask, um, but I think number one priority would for, would for them to, be ta to take out the marked ones. A saying, though. Okay. On it requested, and that's what we want requested. So there you go. All right, all right, Euphemia, you're on the spot. You and Light walk down to the the center of where the council is as circ as gathered around, uh, and you look around and you see these elder dragons, much changed, glorious, magnificent, 
um, in you know whatever form they choose to be appearing in at that moment. So a couple of them are actually in their full dragon form. Um, and you recognize that these indeed are monarchs amongst dragons, greater and grander than anything that you read about or heard about in stories, you know, beyond ancient dragons. These are the, the, the royalty, these are the sires of, of the dragon flights, the only ones that remain. You look around and you notice that all the dragon kin and, and, and various um, creatures and dragonborn that have arrived, there are no other dragons. There's just these seven and light. All the rest are some kind of half-breed or distant kin. These are the last remaining dragons in the world. In all of, all of existence. So this is like all like the different like material planes? Across the planes, yes. Those, those two have yeah. had thousands of years, and but they haven't had a chance to procreate. There was one. It takes, it takes about fifty thousand years to you know get to first base. Yeah, we accidentally killed the one. I mean, don't worry about that. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, we killed this. Girl. But yes, Euphemia, you're on the spot. You know our request. Euphemia, you and Light go forward, and and Light says, "I present to you, she, who called me forth from the the world of tree and branch and leaf." This is my lady, Euphemia. <laughs> Nivularis kind of like tilts his head a little, but then he looks at you and says, Speak. We, the group of Avengers you see behind you, have the same goal as this gentleman right here. That, but we're looking for a more tangible um tangible um help in this if you could help us in a way to fight this war against these demons because they wish to destroy the world and everything within it i'm sure we, we need your help to fight these creatures before the there's nothing left and why should we seek to defeat the ones who are slaying the very gods that slaughtered us and our kind thousands of years ago. Obviously because they already they don't give a damn about you. They already have your goddess as a thrall protecting their petty gate to destroy the god the gods that you dislike. They, once they're done with the gods they're gonna come after you. Because humanity, elven kind, doors aren't going to be anything. None of them are going to be able to stop them once the gods are dead. The gods are holding back the massive army. And the only chance we have of destroying them is to attack them now. Alright, Euphemia. Persuasion check. Oh, sorry, chills. How do you spell his name? I can't hear you. What are you saying? I can't. I didn't hear him either. Yeah, I didn't hear anything that you said. Yeah, I can't hear. I can't hear. Hear Albert. Yeah, I think he left. I I had I just reloaded Discord. Okay. Um, yeah, I hear you. I was wondering how you spelled Mojin because you spelled it you spelled it differently than the book does. Yeah, I spell like Mojin. Yeah, but that's another reason because they killed their god friend beside like not the they didn't kill Bahamut or Tiamat, but they killed their god friend. The friend of their god. Okay. Yeah, pretty much like that. Something right. like that. There's some sort of relation. Okay. As you say this, the you hear buddy. the 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 dragons um, around you, these massive creatures of power and authority, um, deep, deep ancient magic flowing through every bit of their veins and their their blood, their very forms um, transformed into into essence of of of, of power. Um, 
You hear Nebul Nebularos say, You have spoken well. Give us a moment to convene. We know of who you are. We know of how you have helped one of our very own, Shaylin, and brought peace to her mind. We know, and Krikishard chimes in, HOW THEY HAVE SLAIN MY SON! We know of that as well. Do you know if he was being corrupted by something? Because he just attacked us within Mojin's area, and Mojin was our friend. Um, Nebularo says, Unfortunately, you speak the truth. You will notice that none of our kin or offspring are here. They have all fallen, not only to the blade of the gods, but also to the blight that followed. Their minds deteriorated, their forms corrupted. Only we were strong enough to resist the change, the curse that was placed upon us. Krigajard. So Go on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to hit that thing. I was talking to myself. He says, he says to Krigajar, he says, You know as well as we that your son ceased to be himself long, long ago. You can, as he's saying this, you know, his form is just like shifting and swaying in the, in the sky. And Krigajar says, It matters not. Blood is blood. For the next few, um, couple of minutes, the dragons discourse amongst themselves. Real quick, Midas. And, uh, yes? Just want to make sure it's known that we also have the blessing of Mo Mojin. I want to, okay. I want to mention that. Alright, um, Nebularo says, and we do see the handiwork of he who was called Friend of Dragons upon you um he, he turns to you Albrecht he says in aiding you would we find vengeance upon those who slew our friend yes you would who slew Modron for a second it was in Kamel uh, yes, and I know the specific person who has slain him. Know the person who has taken on his mantle as Master Craftsman. Okay. So they, they begin to deliberate. And minutes go by. Just time seems to, to, to just move along effortlessly. You guys aren't sure how long time has happened, has passed by, because Nebularos himself has a very disorienting effect. It's almost like you guys are in your own world um, while he is around. He, he seems to change the very nature of the world and reality around you in his presence. Um, so you're not sure how much time went by. But after a, li a while, um, they return. And it's not Let Nebularos who speaks, but Zerabor steps forward. He says to you, "Wait, where's my picture?" It's a the pair. Zerabor steps forward to you. Um. <laughs> Yeah, he was on a different plane. Oh, okay. I, I guess there remember. should be dragon turtles here. They they are kind of related, but it'd be really hard for them. They're they're still walking. It's only been two weeks. Sure. They're having to walk across like <laughs> continents, like a lot of countries and stuff. Yeah. And they're pretty. There should slow. be like an, uh, a dragon. Ten years turtle. later, they might get here. Yeah, there should be. Yeah, like ten a years from now, they'll get here. Super dragon turtle. This is a continent. All right. Zerabor is going to show up, but in his in his true form. All right. Um, and as he as he 
comes around. He's 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 very large, um, almost as big as you know, bigger than 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 Shaylin, bigger than Practinic. Not as big as Krikajar. Krikajar is nuts. And Nebularos is his wingspan. It, he seems to to consist of less mass, but his his wings overall span is larger. But um, Zerabor is very very imposing. You can tell he's a, he's um, up there in the in the overall hierarchy of power amongst these these dragons. Shit, this isn't loading very quickly. He <laughs> says to you. He says stalling to you. And stalling. Yeah. He says to you, Albrecht, he comes forward and he says, We have come to a decision. This is what it looks like. We have come to a decision. Not all were in favor of lending you our aid, but most were. We will give you time to convince the rest. But in order for us to lend a hand, all must be as one. In order for us to join the battle ourselves, the council must be unanimous. But in the meantime, since you have a majority, we have agreed to give you that which you ask for on a smaller level perhaps as an opportunity to wage the war you seek. We give you two gifts. First, he, point, he, he points over to um, he summons over Bartolomir. Bartolomir. Yes, my lord. Cease your deception. Cease your genocide. It ends now. If you waver from our commands, you will be broken. You will be consumed in flame. And all of your kin will be stricken from our bloodlines as the bastards and perpetrators that they are. Um, mm -hmm. Bartolomir begins, begins to shit himself. <laughs> he says... We know of your deception, how you sought even to take these here in and turn them to your gain. It will not happen. Bartolomir, is, 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 his crap is hitting the floor. He's like, yes, my lord. He says, you will put yourself and your kin at the disposal of these heroes. Shaylin herself demands it. Mirex and I will enforce it. Fight for what they fight for. Bartolomir says, I have no option but to obey. And Zerabor turns to you and says, that is our first gift. The gift of the Dragonborn. May they fight at your side. And then Nebularos swoops over, or, or just steps in and says, And for the second, it says, Dark Elf, stand in the center of this pedestal. And let me gift to you that which you have sought for and asked. Alright. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he spreads his Sorry wings. Sorry about that. Alright. And now, you know, we're, we're late into night, so late that um, it, it, the, the time has gone on. The sun has, has begun to crest over the horizon already as we are well into the sunrise. Nebularo says, incline your eyes towards that of the rising sun. And he lifts off from the top of the mountain effortlessly, soundlessly, as the void 
rises. You see him fly towards the direction of the sun, and his wings span, and, and you can tell that he's moving at an incredible speed, but for some reason it doesn't look like he is, because he doesn't seem to be to be shrinking, you know, or, 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 or in your vision, growing smaller as he grows farther away. In fact, you can it, it's, it's a bit of an optical illusion, because you know he's flying at incredible speed away from you, but it looks like he's either standing still or growing closer, because his size begins to grow and grow and grow and the shadow and the darkness of his void begins to fill the, the horizon in front of you and as he reaches the apex of his flight just as the sun begins to cr has completely crested over the hill he flares his wings outward and the darkness encompasses the sun and all you see is the halo of the of the the cornea of the sun um, not the cornea, the, um, what's that freaking called? The light ring around the sun, blazing through fire, a ring of fire burning in the sky, casting its, 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 um, its fluorescent light across the entire mountain side, mountain range that you, that you guys are standing on. Corona? Um, Corona, that's it. And you feel <laughs> as you're, as you're standing there in the light of the, of this, total solar eclipse as Nebularos himself has has kind of like filled the, the, the heavens with his presence um, you feel the gauntlet on your hand begin to hum and you can see a moonlight emanating from it and a sparkle on its on its on each of its knuckles um, it begins to shake and you can feel it it, it clench your, your hand isn't clenching but the gauntlet itself is closing and as it does so, um, blackness begins to flake off of it, and you see streaks of silver and light um, begin to uh, emanate from it. And normally it was just a gauntlet, but it begins to grow and expand, and it goes backwards. It covers your, it begins to encompass your whole forearm um, as as pieces of it begin to like organically just grow out in shards and in in different. Um, pieces of metal and steel that begin to emanate and when it's all said and done it wraps up over your whole forearm over your elbow and and stretches up there's a there is a joint at your elbow halfway up your your bicep um, in the center of it um, at, the, at the back of your wrist is a glowing piece of moon of, of uh, uh, moonlight just crystallized there um, and your gauntlet has reached its second form Gonna do like D two hundred of punching damage. <laughs> no, this one's so this one's very different. This one's very different. It might be the, depending on how you want to use it, it might be the um it could, has a potential to be more powerful than the rest of them, but that depends on how you use it. I'm gonna have to go to bed for lab, for school. All right, thanks, Ashok. We're just we're just about done here anyway. Okay, I'll uh I'll talk to more to you more later. Thanks. Not bad, not bad. Okay. So. Oh shit, that's fucking good. I like it. Oh. Once per turn, okay. D100. Hell fucking yeah, that's fucking good as shit. It basically replaces now, uh, Feldorn's sword. <laughs> Now, um, this is not... You notice that it has nothing to do with attacks. It's who she moves through. Yeah. While she's in the ethereal realm. Not so bad. it could be one creature, or it could be a hundred creatures. Yeah. Um, as long as she moves through them, they take that damage. Just send her into the orc army through the ethereal yeah, realm. Shit, uh, we're staying okay. out of this. Euphemia, you got this. Run through everybody. Basically... We don't, we don't, have, have, that, if I do, we don't have that power if I do, yet. Um, double movements, and then I go back and forth between one guy like 10, 20 times, is that an idea? No, like only, only once, once, per, once per, per turn. And I'm going to say, okay. here, I, sh I should add this as, as a condition, um, it only, you can only, to reset it, to reset the ability, you have to go back into the physical plane, then jump back into the, the ethereal. You can't stay ethereal the whole time and just run around killing people. So, it's like <laughs> one, 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 one,
You, so. you enter the ethereal, and you go, you run through as many people, uh, you, you run through whoever you want to. And then in order to activate the ability again, you have to have transitioned again. Once it replaces a blink, and I don't have to roll a fucking dice. Yeah. Yeah, that's super, super fucking amazing. Hell yeah. Okay, and also... Um, I upgraded what it, your the enchantment that your your glove can absorb to legendary strength, so you basically get to equip another legendary item. Is, have you actually used that though? I don't ever remember you saying you've absorbed anything. Yeah, I absorbed yeah, my. She has it. So basically, it um, casts her, like a ton of spells. Yeah. Yeah, I but it you. can go legendary now. So there there's a wide variety of items that you could you could absorb in, up to including up to tier one legacy items but most of the legendaries aren't haven't they all been like weapons yeah but there's there's other stuff out there weapons though right so the gauntlets would do so whatever the weapon so you could does have, right you could have done the, you could have done the hand of vecna honestly <laughs> that would have counted you um or or whatever ever whatever else you guys can find Anyway, I'm going to stick this oh, in my inventory. All right, so that's she where absorbed. we're gonna, uh, What? And destroy the item, or yeah, it destroys, it, it destroys yeah. the enchantment on the item. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Don't touch these. <laughs> okay. That's right. So, so Euphemia, I'm giving you. I'm putting this new item in your inventory. The um. So basically, where you guys are, where we're leaving off here, um, you have about ten thousand dragonborn at your disposal now. Um, and Bartolomir is the leader. Wanted to kill us? The previously did, but they have been ordered by the by the dra by the dragon elders to to basically fall in line, and at the at least for the moment, they seem to be agreeable. Um, you also have your unlocked legacy items tier 2 and they say that the, before like the 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 rest of the actual dragons are not going to they cannot physically intervene themselves until they are in unison they are in agreement on, on aiding you and the two holdouts are um, Krigashard for sure and um, to an extent Praktinic he's just, he's just contrary as in, in general he just doesn't give a fuck All right. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. So that's that's kind of where you guys are. Um, any other questions or thoughts or comments? I would, I would like to ask Nebularos a question. Sure. I would like to ask him if he would be interested in meeting the... Because he's not a man, but a person who has taken on the mantle of Bojan that can vouch for us as well. He'll say... Um, he'll say, um, I think we've won, so. <laughs> There is no one yet who has taken on the mantle of Modron. Not in my view. If this person is truly his heir apparent, um, he must first prove himself worthy. And he must prove himself a friend of dragons. Is he such? Uh, you can ask. I'd point to the two fiery people. You can ask them about him. They have met him before. Then, if time and circumstance are appropriate, I would indeed care to make his acquaintance. Oh, do, does he asking for a location right now, or is he saying well, he'll wait? <laughs> I didn't. Um, he's, so there's two things. He basically he's he um um. Right now, um, Kildrek is just a guy on a, a blacksmith trying to get better at blacksmithing. Um, he has not taken on any part of Mojin's portfolio. So he is not the god of smithing or the, or the, the crafts of craftsmanship. Um, and oh, Nebularo geez. says that, that this might not be the best time. Okay. Understandable. I was just... I was curious, because I like to put my own NPC back into the story as much as I can as a personal okay. player. But he would be interested. For sure, he would be interested. So... So, right. okay, I'll, I'll just, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so you, everyone has their weapon, their legacy weapons. 
Um, you guys have quite a bit more to work with now. Um, start thinking about what you want to do because West Vane is destroyed. It's been terrorized. You're not even sure if the king is still alive um, or, or who's still alive in that town. And you're not quite sure. It's been two weeks. You're not quite sure of where the... the um, what the army is up to now or what the marked ones are up to. You guys have been detached from the world for two weeks. Or, for that matter, what Whitebeard or Incomel or Malcontent or the rest of them are up to. But you've made some very powerful allies. Okay. Oh, I am. Alright. Um, if there's, unless there's anything else, I think we'll call it right now. Alright. Well, thanks for running the game. Very sweet. Good to get Very that good. story Very going. Good. Yeah, thanks. Um, next week I'm going to be late, or I'm going to show up and be in and out for like the first two hours. Okay. Yeah. Huh? It sucks. I'm going to have to drop. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to drop um, tomorrow's game. Tomorrow's Pepin's last day. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, that sucks. Yeah. It's Pepin's so getting too small. Are screwed. Huh? So, small. so Elwyn, you'll be able to you'll be able to play a, or at least um, talk in and out for the first couple hours, but you'll have to be working on the side. You're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's fine. That's fine. I think we worked that out. Yeah. We'll see how it goes because I don't. Um, they said because Eastern time, it's already like those two hours. It's from t uh, twelve to two a.m. So I really doubt there'll be a lot of work, but I don't know. Um, you know, we'll try it out next week, see how it goes, and we'll go from there. Because I really don't want to drop. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. I will catch you next week. Yep. All right. All right see Ellen, you. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, this stuff works out. Yep. Take care, see guys. you tomorrow. All right. Bye. This is just a thousand.